call to order this meeting of the uh, March 18th select board meeting. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Who's been seconded? Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? All right. And approved as written. Next on the agenda is the select board organization, uh, including electing the chair and vice chair and secretary. Do I have a motion? Uh, is there a particular order we'd like to go in? It's up to you. Uh, no. But uh, why don't we follow the, uh, the, the agenda? Right. Chair first. Yeah. Chair, <coughs> I would like to nominate Roger Clapp for the chair of the Waterbury Select Board. Second that motion. Moved and seconded. Discussion. <coughs> Thanks for your year of service already. Thrilled <laughs> that you're willing <laughs> to continue it. <laughs> uh, thank you. And thank you for the nomination. Um, I, uh, be honored to serve uh, as chair again. Uh, I feel like I was uh, just getting started uh, this past year. Uh, would love to serve again. I don't intend to necessarily serve out an entire three-year term in this position, but uh, would be honored to serve as chair uh, this year. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll abstain. <laughs> okay. Uh, next we have uh, Vice Chair. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to nominate Alyssa Johnson as Vice Chair for the coming year. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'd say you have big shoes to fill. I thought Danny did a great job uh, as vice chair uh, for a couple of years that I was here. Uh, and uh, I uh, appreciate you uh, stepping forward. Uh, you're clearly qualified uh, due to uh, your extensive work on both the select board, the planning commission, et cetera. So uh, I would support this. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll follow Roger. <laughs> that passes with one abstention. Okay, Secretary. So I have a motion. I'll say, having served as Secretary, we are incredibly fortunate that Karen, in addition to printing all our material, <coughs> takes meticulous notes for the meeting. So I would note it is largely a ceremonial title but a good formality to have. Except that Karen can't make it to the next meeting. Oh! <laughs> you, will, you will have a responsibility You have to share that now before <laughs> 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 Yeah, you need a board secretary. You need a board secretary. Yeah. I'll fall on the hand grenade if someone wants to, <laughs> wants to make a motion. I will nominate Kim's secretary. <laughs> I second that. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Thank you, Kim. Hearing yeah. none, all in favor say aye. 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 I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet. Any opposed? Any abstentions? One over here. Okay. Uh, the motion carries. <coughs> Okay, we have uh, our three officers in place. And uh, any further uh, organization needed, or can we move forward? Can we move forward. Um, do we have to do conflict of interest? Especially uh, conflict of interest is a little bit farther yep. down on the I, agenda. I forgot it was a second <coughs> item. Good thinking. Uh, next on the agenda is the consent agenda uh, with uh, 
looks like about 10 or 11 uh, items on it. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve uh, items A through I on as printed on the, on the uh, agenda. <laughs> Moved. Second. And seconded. <laughs> Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> opposed. Any abstentions? The consent agenda is approved as written. Okay, now we have the public session. Uh, anyone wishing to address an issue not on the warned agenda? Uh, can you please step forward, state your name. I ask you to uh, try to confine your uh, comments to three minutes or less. And anything needing more than that, we'll bring it up at the ensuing meeting. Yes, Chris. Uh, Roger, I had something pertaining to town meeting. Should I just wait for the next? Yeah, we're going to do a debriefing on town meeting. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to wait for that one. Anything not on the agenda? Yes, Tom. I just want to report the uh, town charter passed the House a few weeks ago. It is now passed the Senate Government Operations Committee and Senate Finance. Tomorrow it is scheduled for what's called the second hearing of the bill. Uh, oftentimes the third and final hearing would occur the following day or often or quite quickly. If that is approved, it would, it would, then it will be fully approved by the Senate and House. The, the Secretary of, I don't recall if it's the House or the Senate, but essentially delivers it to the governor. That takes a few days. The governor has five days to sign it. I talked to the tax department today. When I presented the local option tax, I had noted that once it's passed and signed, if it's passed and signed, it's a two-quarter process to get it in place. There's apparently been some efficiencies because what I was told today was it will be in place one quarter after the quarter in which it is signed into law. So if it is signed into law by the end of March, it would be in effect for July 1st. It is signed, if it is signed before June 30th, it's October 1st. Great. So we could have a, um, a very substantial unbudgeted revenue gain headed our way. Nice work. That's great. Anything else? Yes. Cheryl, Mom. Uh, I'm Cheryl Bloor of uh, Waterbury. So I just wanted to know if you guys had a status update on the property that you were looking at on High Street and the purchase of Lawson Hall. I know that it was talked about a little bit in the report, but I didn't know if we were any further along with any plans for those two. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can, I can address that. So, so Stanley Lawson's site is still owned by the state. Um, you know, the bill was signed into law last June essentially sell the site to us. Um, they're working on the subdivision that requires an amendment of their Act 250 permit. Um, not a very difficult amendment. They submitted that amendment probably a month ago and it was rejected because it was incomplete. Um, my understanding is they did not note on the application that the site is served by municipal water and sewer, so it should be an easy correction. Um, state moves slow. I hope to have the property in our hands three months ago. We hope we're not in the same place in three months. Um, so we can't do a whole lot until we own the property. Um, the high street property, um, we hired Grenier to do a survey, Grenier Engineering, um, to do some work to make sure there's no unexpected contingencies with the site. The, we've looked first at the bottom part of the, part of the property. Um, there's certainly room for some development. The, the challenge, there's two, there's two big challenges, really three I'd say. The first is uh, it's not a level site by any means. So in our thinking, you would probably um, build a driveway off of Armory and come in. Uh, there's, there's probably 40 or 50 of Armory. There's a fire hydrant if you know the, one, the site. You come in that direction. Um, so you'd have to do less site work. But the other challenge is uh, there, there's water right there uh, with a ton of pressure. Um, the sewer runs um, on the far side of houses off of High Street, so you'd have to, uh, you'd have to run the sewer through someone's driveway mm. and then obviously negotiate with that person and probably repave their driveway. So it's not, not without challenges. Um, and depending how you build the units, there's an awful lot of dirt to move. So we're also... Um, my initial thinking, um, I think our initial thinking internally was 
look at the bottom side of the property first, the high street side. Um, given some of the difficulties in developing it, we're going to also take a look at the top and, and bring back to the housing task force and select board some options. So we're getting there. It just takes a little bit of time. So no idea what kind of housing you want to put up there at this point. Um, you can accommodate, I think, on the bottom side of it, um, and we don't have anything formal yet, but I yep. think you, you can accommodate a couple of um, a couple of units that are that are duplexes or triplexes, if that was a desire, and that's that's you know towards the higher end of, of maximizing density. You could also just do something much smaller or nothing, of course. Um, I haven't taken a close look at the top side of it, but it's it's a little bit um, a little bit bigger area, mm -hmm. um, a little bit easier to develop, and you've got water and sewer right there. But probably something similar. Um, you know, just down the road, you've got um, I believe nine units way in the corner there, and that's not on a huge parcel of land. Um, the top side is you know I think for the top side maybe nine is a bit too big, but could probably accommodate six off the cuff. And are we thinking competitive RFP on this thing? Um, or yes, more, yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> we're not quite there. Yeah. And the okay. challenge is, um, when I talk to developers, it, it's an interesting conversation because my, you know, we all we hear about is the housing market is insane, mm -hmm. and, and there's an assumption there that there's a huge profit margin for developers. Um, when I talk to developers and real estate agents, the answer I get is not really. Um, <coughs> there's a big profit margin for developing 3,000 square foot homes on 20 acres. Um, there's not necessarily a big profit margin for developing <coughs> homes in the village. Um, and the numbers I'm, I'm generally told um, for, for a property like this served by water and sewer, it's still a development cost in the range of 400 bucks a square foot. Um, which is pretty pricey. Um, so if you if you think about um, you know think about apartments, if you're going to build a or a couple you know some duplexes, if you're building three units that are not huge, you've still got 1.2 million into the building. Um, okay. That's just where the market is today. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a it's a bit of a challenge, and that's why um, you know you're not seeing a ton of multifamily housing being built. Um, it's just more of a challenge, and there's there's a big margin I think in you know, the upscale single family homes, yeah. um, less of a margin in the downtowns. Okay. So it's certainly possible to do it, but it's, um, yeah. I, I, don't I, I don't think we're gonna, I don't think we're gonna make, um, yeah. there, there's not a million dollar profit, I don't think it's that aware. There, there's certainly some profit there. Right. And part of it, I think, depends on what the town wants to do with it. So the town wants, <laughs> You know, when you when you own the land, you can you can set the terms. Right. So if you want to develop the, the downside near High Street, for instance, does the town want to maximize profit? Um, maybe at the expense of density. Does the town want to require some some extensive landscaping of the bank to yeah. enhance the feel of the community? Um, there, there's some negotiation you can do in those things. You know, you're in the driver's seat when you own it. Yeah. Well, make it fit in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's it's a competitive process, but but maybe in the end it's not just based on sale price; it's based on some of those other factors. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I appreciate that. And I know Lebanon, New Hampshire, is just doing a pilot thing with um, single store homes. You guys read about that with grants and things from the state? Something to maybe kind of check out when we're looking at it. It was just in the paper a couple weeks ago. Um, they're doing something like similar with their town properties too. So, mm -hmm. all right, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. One other follow up, just recognizing this is part of like the suite of things having to do with housing in town. Is I just wanted to plug that the housing task force is meeting this Thursday from six to eight. There is a Zoom <coughs> option. That agenda is posted on the town website. But just to say, an hour of the meeting is devoted to discussion with the developer, um, just looking about challenges they're running into in the community, and then the other agenda item is looking at potential of infill development with someone from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. So just to say, like in my view, those are two specific housing pro projects, but also part of this broader picture around what we're doing in town. Um, and we also, as a select board, had approved earlier in the year that group specifically looking at types of housing that's needed in the community 
just as we're thinking towards some of these questions around what type, what size, what price range, that is also something the group is looking at more broadly through the housing task force. Okay, so was that, you said Thursday? Correct. Okay. Six to eight? Yeah. Yep. And that's the standing meeting date. It's the third Thursday, I believe, six to eight. Okay. Any other comments from the public? This is Valerie Rogers. Can you hear me? We can. Go ahead, Valerie. Um, great. Um, is it appropriate to talk about the Vermont State Police contract, or is that coming up later? I didn't see it on the agenda. Uh, I don't think it is on the agenda this week. Mm -hmm. No. I just have a public comment. Sure. Um, about the contract, I think I have it's timing and it's going to be signed soon for June. Um, but the price is going to go up, I think, from 385 to 405,000 with a potential for less coverage because of staffing. And I just want to make a comment that I think that we have a lot of gaps currently. So from my perspective, what I understand is that our town doesn't have any trooper resident on or in our district um, Saturday and Saturday into the afternoon until five. No trooper all day Sunday until Monday morning. No trooper from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. And then we don't have any resident trooper Monday after five. So I guess I would just say that, I don't know if you're negotiating those kinds of um, scheduling. I know that you're saying that the VSP is saying it's a short staff, but I just wanna bring it to your attention that uh, I've noted that I think there's a lot of gaps. Uh, and I have paid attention to the, the VSP reports they send to the uh, select board monthly, I believe, uh, data regarding the events, who call, uh, not who called, but the kind of events that they responded to, whether they responded, whether well, a resident trooper was in town or not, um, and the response time. So I think these reports are really important to be able to assist. That's the success of this project. And I haven't seen one posted since June of 2022 when the barracks was in Middlesex, and then it moved to Berlin. So I do know in June of 2022, the last report was about 110 events in June. 57 calls came in during the resident trooper's time in Waterbury. I think 53 came in while the resident was not in Waterbury. And the response time for that trooper that traveled from Middlesex was 20 to 30 minutes to closer to an hour plus. So I would appreciate being able to review the additional reports once the troopers, the barracks moved to Berlin. And I hope that you have been reading and assessing these reports to move forward with, you know, the project is successful. Um, the more you see events being called when the troopers not in Waterbury should be concerning to the community and to you. So um, that's my comment. And because of the gap on Monday nights for the eclipse, will, will we be having a trooper on call Monday night the 8th, even though they're not scheduled? Hmm. Uh, I think I, we got most of it. Um, Sally, did you have an update on that? Just, so the night shift trooper doesn't work for you set. Uh, what it used to be was Tuesday through Saturday. The night shift trooper now works the rotating schedule. That Monday for everybody in the state police is a heavy day, so there is no leave that day. So there is a trooper on that Monday night mm -hmm. of the eclipse. Okay. Um, so Valerie, did you hear that? Uh, there will be a trooper on, on duty on Monday night of the eclipse. Okay, great. And can you give a, a you know, a kind of report about what you've seen in these reports in terms of when these calls are coming in. I mean, I haven't seen anything since June of 2022, and I hope that they're uploaded onto the Yeah, I'm working with the state police to get those up. That's like, it's the only way we can yeah. assess this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we, and we do intend to have this on the agenda for a, a fuller discussion. It's, uh, just that we have a pretty packed agenda today, uh, and we do have uh, okay. a couple of months before we have to finalize the new agreement. Um, so, yeah, we will get this uh, on the agenda within the next uh, two meetings. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Anything else from the public? Uh, yeah, Mike. Just as an extension to that, 
Didn't Tom, you said that possibly because of if, if the armory project winds up going through that we would consider negotiating to get extra time <coughs> from the troopers as? I think in an ideal world, I don't think they have the staff to. I, I know that's kind of, <laughs> but it's a good bargaining chip. All right. Thanks. Yes, so was it? Just one last public comment. I just wanted to thank and publicly acknowledge crew, um, our long-term recovery committee who put on a flood fair this past Saturday and just there was a lot of resource providers um, and folks, I didn't know we had outreach staff from some of our senators who live in town. Um, so it's just neat to know those folks are in the community. I know several of us attended, but just wanted to acknowledge the volunteer work that went into them putting that on for us. Yeah. All right. Any other comments from the public? Let's move forward. Uh, the brief debriefing of town meeting. Open it up. Anyone wish to make a comment? Yes, Mike. I thought it was a good meeting. I thought it was fairly well attended. Um, met my ex expectations for for attending. I always wish that, that there are more people that will go. Uh, I was a little surprised that more things weren't discussed under other business that weren't, but I think the discussion of the budget was very clear, and I think uh, questions were asked, and I think in, in general it was a good discussion, and you know, everything pretty much on the agenda seem to, uh, the warned agenda seemed to, you know, pretty much go through, but I think it's a, it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll also note that we did pledge allegiance to the flag, yes. and we presented the Keith Wallace Awards, uh, so we addressed a couple of issues that have been brought up uh, after uh, last year's town meeting. Um, uh, Danny. Hi, thanks. Um, I am curious if we have ever, and if it might be something we consider doing, um, just kind of taking, quote, attendance at town meeting, get an idea of, you know, it could be obviously optional, but an idea of how many people are there for how long, um, that might be the harder part, maybe a demographic of um, age. I, when I look around in the room, I see, um, you know, not, not as broad a range of age as I, I would love to see. Um, I think there are certainly some barriers to participation on town meeting day uh, when it comes to work um, and not having a day off. So um, as we go forward and think about you know, how to make town meeting equitable and accessible for as many Waterbury voters as possible, I was thinking about just you know, getting an idea of how many people are there and who it is, and then maybe seeing what kind of outreach we could do um, to folks who can't make it and find out why they can't make it and or why they choose not to go. Um, and that would help, you know, have a little bit of data to drive any decision making or discussion in the future. <laughs> yeah, I did a, a rough head count and came up with about 150 at least at one point. Um, but uh, I don't know if we have anything more, more accurate than that. No? no. Okay. You're a little the bit busy. voting staff is not going to be in a position to take those numbers or maintain any kind of list. Um, I can't. I can't put that kind of burden on them, unfortunately. I think Tom and Absolutely, I were yeah. about 180 at one point. Yeah, right we were exchanging right little, yeah. slipping little notes to each other, head count. So, mm -hmm. um, so but from our vantage point, that was that was about what we came up with. And, you know, there were definitely people that came and stayed a short time and left. There were some people that stayed for the entire meeting. Um, it's a great idea, Danny. I just don't, I, from my seat, I, in my chair, I, I don't know how I could do that for you. But designating someone to do it would be fine. Just not me. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it would be a volunteer situation, yeah. not a uh, staff or, you yeah. know, specificity situation yeah, at all. For sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Chris. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to comment on was the fact that I turned around a couple times and saw the room pleasantly full of people 
and to Karen's point, the amount of people that cycle through, you know, you can count heads at any given time, but how many of those heads change during the during the course of the, the meeting uh, in order to get a real count? That might be difficult to do. Uh, I was pleased with the amount of people that were there in, in comparison to the past meetings. I saw a lot of new faces that I hadn't seen before, so that, that was good. Um, the other thing that I was con somewhat concerned about and have been for a number of years is the fact that our representatives show up just for a short period of time, make a few comments, and out the door they go. There's no time frame at all to ask questions or you know, get input from their constituents. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of the thing that they had over here at CrossFit Brook the night of the select board meeting when I had said it'd been nice if they picked a different night so that not only the board could have gone there, but, uh, you know, I quite honestly, <laughs> the way things are going would rather be at a board meeting than in front of them because I tend to see more movement of the needle here than at the state level. But uh, I was going to talk a little bit, or had thought about talking a little bit to the, to the uh, residents and the, you know the people that were at town meeting about some of their thoughts about what's going on at this at this state level um, to hear their concerns. Or it'd been nice if somehow that could have get passed on to to our representatives. I can tell you, and I know there's some people, on, or at least one person on Zoom, who have reached out to our representatives. I've reached out to several representatives, not only the two that we have here. Mm -hmm. Here, the way I look at it, all our Vermont representatives are, we're their constituents of all of them. Um, and for whatever reason, they, they don't want to return your call. They don't want to reach back out to you. Uh, that's sad. Because I know that if I contacted any one of you select board members, you would certainly get a hold of me and find out what I was uh, interested in. So uh, I don't know how to change that. Uh, I know their time frame is short because they have to make it to Mules or in Huntington. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that that it would have been a nice time to have at least a few minutes of engagement about concerns because basically all I heard was that. You know, we're having difficulties with homeless issues. We're having difficulties, difficulties with revenue issues. We've been given hundreds and literally hundreds of millions of dollars, and we're just as broke now. And, you know, maybe I'm ad-libbing a little bit here, but that was it in a nutshell. We're just as broke now as we were before, and it's been nice to be able to engage <coughs> and find out a little bit more in the weeds as to what, what that was all about. And so, Chris, you didn't have that opportunity when you did go over to Cross the Brook because I thought that was sort of the. the, the no, I didn't anyways. intend that because I was here at the select board oh, okay. meeting that okay. night. That's why I, mean, I said I thought, yeah, it'd been nice if they could have scheduled that on there. another night so that, yeah. I mean, most, most select boards, I believe, meet on Monday nights, don't they? Typically. Typically, yeah. yeah. And it was, you know, it'd yeah. been nice if, if that had been changed so that. Maybe some of the board members, and not all of you, but you know, one or two of you could have been there. Uh, I certainly wanted to go, but then I, I flipped the coin and said I'd rather be here instead. Uh, okay. But anyway, it's, all uh, right. I thought um, town meeting overall was, was good. All right, thank you. Anything else on town meeting? Yeah, okay. Um, this morning, the Associated Press posted a big article about how the rest of the nation can learn from Vermont's Town Meeting Day and our impact on democracy. Huh. <laughs> okay. What, what can they learn? I don't know. <laughs> they went to Granville. And that's, oh. that's what they were reporting from. Yeah, Melissa. Um, I just want to say thank you publicly to Karen and others who helped with the behind the scene logistics of chairs and setup and child care and making sure that there was lunch and just I know it's part of your work. You do it and do it well, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. The school gets all the credit for setup. We actually walked in Tuesday morning and the chairs and the stage were ready. Mm -hmm. um, Excuse me, Monday at setup. And one idea just for us to revisit last year is I had a text after I had gotten off the stage and everything had passed saying, can you announce that there is child care? And I know that we worked really intentionally to have that. 
um, but everyone didn't. So just thinking to next year, um, I came across, I think Wilmington, Vermont, just did a really nice one pager saying that if you're doing town meeting, like this is town meeting, of course we have our formal warning, but a little more accessible around, this is where it is, child care is provided, there's lunch after when that's finalized, um, and perhaps, um, noting that a moderator would be a good person to be in touch with. Again, like we're all aware of that information, but just trying to make sure it's really clear, um, something just to have out there. So I think, again, in our work in progress of trying to make things more accessible, that's just an idea for next year for one page. Um, I'd like to add one thing. Yes. To kind of piggyback yeah. on that um, is I did want to um, thank our, our moderator this year. Um, I was able to speak with Rebecca on this weekend and just heard what went into moderating this event and the nerves that were involved uh, for her um, and I thought she did an amazing job and allowed everybody to have um, fairly uh, an ease of back and forth discussions that's not always easy when it is being monitored like that and I thought she did an amazing job just moving um, the pieces through. Good. Like just as an aside, I thought the uh, senior center did a great job with the meal. I think sometimes I get almost as much from that, talking with neighbors and such. But I got a good idea on the evening news of town meeting. They had something on East Montpelier. And what they do in East Montpelier, they do kind of a community meal. Everyone, you either pay $5 or you bring a dish that will serve eight people or, or more. And I thought that was kind of a really good idea, you know, to potential bringing town people together. You know, I would say sometimes we get more done over breaking bread, you know, than, than anything else. But I think there was some good discussions over town issues at the uh, lunchtime meal. So it's maybe just some, something to think about maybe for next year. And uh, Karen, uh, in terms of the voting and the flow and everything, that worked uh, mm -hmm. well? We had its challenges. It's a big meeting, so there's a lot of voters. There's over, um, gosh, what were the numbers? 1,200 1, people that day, 1,500 total. Mm -hmm. And you know we were confined to that smaller space in the back of the gym because of town meeting. So there were some challenges. We, we, had some ideas that we bounced around about changing some of the configuration inside that voter area. Um, we had some criticisms about it being noisy. There's not much I can do about that. Um, you know, it was noisy in the back for voting while the meeting was going on, which made it hard for people to hear. But Bob Butler has mentioned that he might have some ideas about amplification, things like that. So we'll, we'll work, continue to work through some of those things. But um, uh, yeah. It was a very, very, very long day. <laughs> so, but it went, all in all, it went well. There's always room for improvement. Melissa? This could go under future agenda. I'm just noting that at our meeting on 129 of this year, we said we would create a policy for payment of special articles. And so I'm just noting that post town meeting, that can be added perhaps to our next agenda, just that we formalize based on what's happened past on town meeting what mm -hmm. the terms are for organizations to get that. We said we wanted uh, a set great. written policy so that when Karen is committing. Anything else on town meeting? You know, um, one of the considerations we had last year was whether we wanted to consider uh, moving to uh, an Australian ballot and have an informational meeting rather than a town meeting. I think uh, our consensus was that we were going to stick with town meeting uh, through this year. Uh, and I, I don't know if anyone wants to any further consideration of changing anything in 2025. I'll make a comment to it. Sure. Um, I have been hearing from a lot of folks that, that would like to be, that some folks would like to see motion to Australia, or would like to see us move to Australia ballots. Some folks are very steadfast in the classic town meeting. I feel like it may or may not be a decision that we ultimately leave up to the voters and not to the select board, because it does seem like a pretty 50-50 split from the folks that I've talked to. It has to go to the voters. It has to go to the voters. Yeah. 
Yeah. It has to go to the voters at a town meeting. Gotcha. It doesn't have to be town meeting day. It can be a special town meeting event. Uh -huh. well, we could potentially put it on a ballot uh, to yeah. <coughs> uh, vote on that. No? I tried to do that <laughs> two years ago, and I think it was ruled that because the whole meeting was an Australian ballot, we couldn't have one Australian ballot question. Even if it was advisory, I asked to do that last year for that exact reason. Hmm. So if we can, I would love to. <laughs> that year we were not able to. Hmm. I wonder if we could, well, let's look into this. Uh, so what are our options for getting a better consensus on what the town's uh, pleasure is in terms of maintaining a traditional town meeting versus moving to uh, something more along the lines of what ducks were do like? Who does? Oh, okay. well, that was, I guess, uh, two things I would propose is one, um, I mean, you can see often read coverage in the roundabout, but as Duxbury is our neighbor and has made this transition recently, I wonder if at some point we might want to just have a conversation with them, even if informational, just about their change and what that's been. And then I also would just propose that we have a timeline for looking at this. I will say, including my multiple years on the board, what's often been hard is it suddenly it's November and December and we're churning really heavily into budget season with whatever else comes up and it feels at that point, I think sometimes as a board member, hard to say now we're having a big conversation and recognizing that the meeting you know, might need to be in January to actually inform our traditional March town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just know, and summer can often be challenging for who's around, so um, I would just say if there was a desire to get input, um, thinking about doing that earlier would be great. I think my biggest challenge is, I mean, I love town meeting day as a tradition. I do think it was really wonderful to have folks in the room. It was a great setting for the award. I appreciated everyone being there. Um, I think per these questions of how to be more inclusive, how to get folks to have that conversation um, in a more low stakes way, I think is what's really been challenging. I mean, we had it on an advisory agenda, I think last year, and maybe we had 15 folks weigh in. Um, Chris. Just one little comment there. Uh, for me, I'd hate to see traditional town meeting go away simply because of the connectivity of your neighbors and your friends. And I think we had good dialogue there, and uh, it was entertaining at times, because uh, it certainly was. Um, and I hate to toss that out the window um, because going to Australian ballot like Duxbury has and some of these other towns just basically, you know, everybody stayed, everybody still votes perhaps, but. It's just, it just, you know, we're, we're divisive enough in this country, um, and to just pull the plug on something like this, like this, it just, to me, brings people together um, as a community. So that's it. Okay. Yeah, Mike. I echo Chris's comment, but I think more importantly, town meeting as a day event gives us the option to discuss issues in full and potentially change things. If you go based upon the town budget, it's a up or down kind of. You look at our school budget, that's kind of what you know what happened. The school budget went down. There was no potential dis discussion, and who knows what might have, might have happened, you know, if if there was a change. So I think that's the biggest benefit. You know, as much as the interaction of people, which I think is important, and I always say. Everyone, you know, it's our civic responsibility, you know, if you to participate, you know, we vote for electors and I think that's an important thing, but to discuss the issues and to be able to make changes to a budget I think is really important. Personal opinion. Okay. Yeah, and I'll be meeting with a couple of the select board members over in Duxbury uh, later this week uh, so I can ask them. Get some input and make this uh, figure out a better timing uh, to put this uh, get this discussed. Do yeah. we want to put it in the parking lot to remind ourselves? I could. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, perfect. All right. <coughs> Close discussion on this uh, and do introductions and process questions. Uh, 
Ian to uh, some of our town officials? Well, we used this time last year to talk about these. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <geez. laughs> we come around every week. These are the orders. And so every Monday, typically, uh, typically every Monday, accounts payable and payable is done. And they require a signature from a select board member. We only need one signature to mail the payments. Now, I've learned that Ian's job is not really conducive to stopping by during business hours, at least not this time of year. Um, Mike has been doing it for us religiously, and we appreciate that. Alyssa often does it at night after a meeting. Um, but just, Ian, in case I've you... I've done it once or twice. You have, Roger. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have. Roger comes every Friday, and we talk about agenda, so he has his own list of responsibilities. But anyway, these are important because um, while we don't hold up payroll without your signature, we do hold up payments without a signature. So if there's a due date on an invoice um, and it's held up for a long period of time, it can cause us to have to pay late charges, things of that nature. So um, if anybody wants to relieve Mike of his duties or let him continue to be the dutiful person, or if Ian has any questions about the process. Well, I, I will say that Mike, after June 15th, I'll be a lot more available for the next few I'm months. fine. I have okay. rotary meeting. It's between 7.30 to 8.30. And after rotary comes, I usually, you know, you know, I may have something going on a little bit, might discuss something for half hour, but I'm usually here by 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. So it's not, not a big game. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm Maybe here. this summer, you can, you can get, get in touch with me. You're, you're welcome to do that. It should learn a lot about the game by going through uh, the orders. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. We'll see you. Uh, Alyssa. Um, I don't know if this is a technicality or required by law, but in the past we have made a motion to the effect authorizing any one select board member to sign the orders on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to make that motion for this ensuing year. Second that motion. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion carries. And um, in, uh, in the past also, uh, the VLCT has had uh, training programs online to cover what your responsibilities are as a uh, select board member. Um, I found it pretty enlightening, uh, a little daunting about everything that you're not allowed to do, uh, which is uh, you know, to discuss anything uh, with uh, more than one uh, select board member outside, anything having to do with town business outside of these ward meetings. Um, but it's, it's interesting uh, to, to know exactly what, what your responsibilities are. So, and uh, the town, uh, the town will pay for that, as I understand it. So uh, yeah. we can forward you those links, and uh, you can find a convenient time to, uh, to uh, take the course. Ian, yeah, I would definitely encourage you to take that to. It's kind of a really important. It's a good, comprehensive list, and League of Cities and Towns does a good job with that. So I would definitely encourage you to do that. I do have plans to actually head down to Lake Moore this Saturday. Oh, okay, great. Mm -hmm. And not just for the golf. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. <coughs> yes. Um, two technical questions that are mostly for staff, but just I noticed that sometimes we are sent the orders, just the, not obviously all the supporting documentation. Is that an easy thing to do? I know it often is to do electronically. I guess I would request, if amenable, to staff and the board. I feel like it's a nice practice just to always send them. So it's funny you would ask me that tonight, Alyssa, because Beth literally said, am I scanning these? And I said, no, send them with me. So um, certainly, it's not a big deal. She, she does her process. Um, you'll see her signature, her initials in the corner, yeah. and then she just scan them and email them. So if you wish to see them, she's more than happy to do that. I guess I would say if there isn't undue duress on any involved, I, as was said, appreciate seeing sure. how, how all the line items add up sure. um, in sure. terms of data to purchase. Not that you can always tell without all the documentation, but. Right. <laughs> but if there's something glaring, you can always shoot back a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So I would yeah. And then, just so you know, I haven't gotten super far yet, but I'm looking at online system. So there's systems where um, we can scan and upload online and vendors can also email to an email address we create and upload it. And 
we have to add in accounting codes for that, um, and you can set up your approval system. So certain invoices I have to approve above a certain dollar amount, so you can code it so certain, everything goes to me above that amount. Um, and, and the invoices can be rejected. You can send it back to us with questions and we can answer. Um, they're not super expensive. Uh, they're certainly not free. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking around at the stage, uh, trying to figure out if there's something that might work for a town our size. In the early days of COVID, that's the way we had to do things. We had to do things all electronically yeah, because they weren't coming into the office. The nice thing about the software now is Vendors can email things directly to the system. Once the system sees an invoice a few times, um, it automatically will code it for accounting purposes. Um, and, and it sort of recognizes, it just recognizes the invoice format. So it gets the vendor name and the dates okay. and all those things pretty well. Um, so would that have all the backup information, kind of like scan, like receipts and stuff like that? That would have it all, yeah. Great. So I'm just starting to dig into it. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, one other process issue is that uh, Vermont law <coughs> requires us to uh, warn an agenda 48 hours in advance of uh, any uh, official meeting. Uh, so generally on Fridays, I'll come in here and work with uh, Tom and uh, Karen to finalize the agenda and um, to get it uh, in for a Monday meeting, uh, first and third Mondays of the month. Uh, unless we decide otherwise. And one of the processes that we introduced this past year was to uh, have as our last agenda item before adjournment is discussing what the agenda will be so that we'll have a chance to have get some input uh, and then in the intervening two weeks, if there's anything that you'd like to be on the agenda, you can just let me know. And generally I try to reach out to each of you individually during that time frame. And as we've already discussed uh, with you individually, uh, and I think I've talked with all of you about uh, serving as liaisons, because one of the things that I realized was that uh, nobody other than Tom and Karen can keep track of everything that's going on in town government. Um, and, and we can't uh, do that very well. <laughs> <laughs> well no, you do better than, than anyone else. Um, but certainly, uh, from a volunteer standpoint, I don't have time to, to do it, and neither does I think anybody else. And so we will each serve as a liaison to one or two committees to stay informed, keep them informed as to what's going on with the select board, uh, work with them so that they can come and meet with us on an annual basis. And uh, we've already gone and met with the rec committee, and <coughs> so we've already sort of achieved that handoff uh, for you to uh, work with them uh, on a closer basis than any of the rest of us will have. Can I get, ask a question about that? Please do. Um, so in terms of putting things on our agenda, mm -hmm. is that something typically that that committee would ask of me, can we get this on an agenda, or is it something that I'm taken from the committee and put, I mean, I suppose it could go both ways, but I'm just thinking, is that usually an ask from the committee or is that in simply? Um, you're right, it, it goes both ways. Uh, generally, I'd say that the, the committee sort of have their mandates uh, and are moving forward. At a certain point, they're going to have come up with a recommendation that they'll request a uh, vote from the select board. Uh, and it really depends on the committee as, as to how that works out. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, generally speaking, uh, I would think that they would only really need to meet with the, the select board once a year. Um, if there's uh, extraordinary circumstances, like you know, we've got new zoning regs, so we've been a little bit more involved with them this year than some other committees. <coughs> um, that's the planning commission. But yeah, um, either way, yeah. you can call me anytime and we can work that out. All right, uh, let's move on to the next agenda item, unless we've got anything else to discuss here. Uh, that's the uh, approved conflict uh, of interest policy and order the rules of procedure. So in your packet, we have a conflict of interest policy. Uh, 
Is anything different here than has been on the policy in years past? Just the names on the bottom. Just the names on the bottom. And the date. All right. So if I can have a motion, then we can uh, uh, let me know if there's a. Well, we have get a motion, and then we can see if there's any uh, concerns here. I would move to approve the select board rules of procedure. Uh, policy is written. Okay, so no. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Rules of procedure are approved. And now the conflict of interest policy. I move to approve the conflict of interest policy as written. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Friendly amendment. I would just say we're adopting the policy. So we're making it up. Okay, accepted. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor of adopting the policy as written? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The policy is adopt adopted as written. I will sign this copy and pass it around. Yeah, you, um, you all also approved under consent the uh, work on settlement of powers, and that has to be signed. All right. By Carolyn Craven. That's done as well. All right. Next, we have a newspaper of record. Yes, we have, this still is a lively debate. Uh, let's determine that we need a physical paper. And, uh, unfortunately, the weekly reader, uh, or the Waterbury reader, uh, went out of publication. Uh, and uh, so we, our agreement was that the Times Argus would be our uh, official newspaper of record and that uh, we would uh, also uh, send uh, any notices to the Waterbury Roundabout, which is now published online. I think the Times Artist is probably still in this bed. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion. I make a motion to approve the Times Argus newspaper as the town of Waterbury's Paper of record, yeah. and we, right. and then we also uh, send the same notices to the uh, Waterbury roundabout. Roundabout, right? Good friendly event. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any uh, abstentions? Okay. Yeah. We have a newspaper of record. Next is the um, expiration of the appointed terms limit. I'm sorry if that was worded funny. Yeah, um, so there's a photocopy of the town report, and I highlighted all the people whose terms are going to expire. I frequently asked when that happens. Just says 2024. Mm. Mm. The, the guidance I was given from Carla was that you never take up appointments in March because you're too busy doing town meeting. So you do it after town meeting, but that leaves a pretty big window of time. So I thought that if I could get the select board to memorialize the expiration of these terms, if it's, what did we discuss, Roger? Did you say May 1st? Uh, April 30th, April 30th. Uh, with the new term to start, May 1st. Okay. So for example, they expired on April 30th. Um, and that would give you essentially two meetings in the month of April to make those appointments. If you all remember, last year was pretty intense. There was a lot of interest in a lot of different committees, which was great. Um, 
So that's what this item is for. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to uh, have the expiration of town appointed commissions end on the 30th of, uh, of April and new terms commence on the 1st of May. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? I, I was wondering if there was ones where it was tied to town meeting day elections, but with the exception of like housing task force where we specify it, and I don't think it would be a problem to have someone serve that bonus month at the end. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense to me. Oh, does housing task force specifically state town meeting day? Is that what I'm No, I'm saying it's a select moment. I was wondering with the timing, which made sense to me in terms of process and having April to do appointments to be effective in May, but I was wondering if there was folks whose election status in March would, you know, then we have like a real term if I'm not, you know, reelected, but still the, or if we should add language around, unless otherwise um, removed from office air quote or something. I think it's minimal. I think it's more technicality that we need now, but that okay. was my only hesitation. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We have new clear dates uh, for term limits. You may. Okay, so I have a piggyback question now that you've made this motion. Um, is it, uh, should it be customary to advertise all vacancies even if the vacancy, the individual who's expiring wants mm. the seat back? This happened last year with the DRB. Yeah. Um, so there's a number of vacancies on the DRB. Um, last year, I just, simply asked, do you want to be reappointed? They answered that they did, and they were reappointed. It never really went out. So that's probably not the case this year, but I, I would like that clarified. Should I be advertising <coughs> all vacancies regardless of whether the individual wants to refill the seat? Okay. Um, I would say, this might sound cold-blooded, but if there is a more qualified candidate for someone, for a seat that it is going to be up for up for grabs a, a second time. Then I think all all resumes should be considered. So the answer would be yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Long one for it. <laughs> I might. I think you could have if you have multiple people interested in a specific position. That's great. You know, we've done that a number of times before. We've asked people if they want to potentially serve in another kind of like committee mm -hmm. who may not have, you know, as, as, as many representatives. So I, I don't necessarily think it's a given that someone has, you know, once their term ends, their term kind of ends and they, they could reapply like a, anyone else. But I think I encourage as many people to apply as, as are interested. Mm -hmm. uh, and just a Question: uh, We don't have any term limits uh, on any of these uh, no. committees. Uh, all they're, they're cut off, but yes, there are term limits. I just didn't get them. They do like this one is. No, they well they sunset at a certain point, but I mean, you, 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 there's nothing saying you can't serve more. You're thinking of oh, oh no, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. I misunderstood the question. I'm yeah. sorry. No, we don't have that. Yeah, um, I don't know if you need a vote on this. Uh, my s sense is that the board thinks it's a good idea to advertise all the new vacancies and if, if people choose to uh, continue, uh, uh, we might well reappoint them. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. And my one note is just on the DRB in particular, the Development Review Board, that board does have built in alternate positions in part because a quorum is so important to their work. So often, you know, they don't have a quorum of the traditional board, but an alternate steps in. And I agree with 
our instruction regarding advertising all seats, but would just note to the board, I do think someone who's served as an alternate on that committee for many years does mm -hmm. more in Preference. additional consideration, as any other incumbent might, but that one in particular um, has just that slightly different structure. Mm -hmm. That vacancy that you see is was recent, just before the town report got published, and um, we, the staff here just all agreed that being that appointments were coming very soon, we weren't going to seek to fill that vacancy on the development review board mm -hmm. at that time. Oh yeah, and I'm just noting have. not many of our other committees have like alternates formally, so just that one's a little different that way. Yeah. That alternate structure seems to work very well for the DRB, because especially people kind of get almost trained up, and then when there is a vacancy, they could go could go on the fly and do their work. So I think it, it does help, but it doesn't preclude, even though if you had an alternate, if you had a new person that may, may have better qualifications, they may, you know, we would consider that. Any further guidance? Okay, you're all set. Good. Yeah, we'll we fire away through all those gym items fairly quickly. Um, and we will be addressing uh, appointments starting our next meeting on April 1st, which we'll discuss later in the agenda. Uh, Eclipse parking. We have a request to close River Road. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there is no special event there, it's a typical hockey weekend for them, but they're concerned, especially the overnight campers on Saturday and Sunday, so the day of the eclipse, they are perfectly fine with being open. Um, mm -hmm. Tried to discuss this, um, tried to find ways to maybe have a soft close where we could work with staff and the ice center folks. Um, Excuse me, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm so John Siegel with the ice center. Okay. So we, we tried to find a way to, to maybe do a soft close, but that's just that's just challenging. And so John, in the end, felt like he simply wanted to make the request to have the ability to close the road for those days, just for the evenings. We've had in the past uh, campers just show up and camp. You know, mm -hmm. park uh, uh, down in your parking lot? In the ice center parking lot. Ice center parking lot? And what we're concerned about is there's going to be, from what we've heard, a lot of people. And I'm guessing most of the campgrounds and whatever are probably booked. Oh, they're not even open yet. And we have nothing going on Monday. We're fine with people doing whatever they want in the parking lot, watching whatever. But we have things going on Saturday and Sunday. And we start early in the morning. And we don't want to arrive there at like 6 Saturday morning and a bunch of people, campers, have set up camp overnight and then we got to evict them. We're also um, visible from the highway, so if there's people driving around looking for a place to park, yeah. and then the other thing is seven days, unbeknownst to us, said, oh, sure, come on, my <coughs> center's got plenty of room. So, <laughs> so Free advertising. Yeah, well, it would have been nice if they had checked with us. But they, they, made so, a, they made a mistake in their publication about how much parking we had available was pretty quickly corrected by Katarina. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that, but I don't know how many people read the fine print. So basically what we're really asking for is if we could close the room when the ice center staff leaves, I think Friday night they're going to leave around 10. All we're asking is put sawhorses at Rodney's so that nobody can get in. Mm -hmm. And then when they arrive in the morning around 6 or whatever, they'll take <coughs> the sawhorses out. And if somebody shows up during the day, we'll have to send somebody out and request, you know, you can't stay here. Mm -hmm. and you, can you manage that, the policing of that? Well, we don't want to, but I, mm -hmm. do you guys have extra hall monitors <laughs> laying around that are looking for something to do? What we kind of like to know is what's our backup plan? I mean, if somebody shows up and starts camping and we go over and say, excuse me, you can't stay here, and they become uncooperative. What's our, I mean, we don't want to get into it with them, so who do we call? I imagine, is that state trooper that you guys have? There's like one guy in town, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So would he be the call? He'd be the call. Um, relatively certain the answer is going to be there's other priorities. That's what we expect. <laughs> 
So I think the guidance is is try to quickly request notify people that there's an ordinance about ten parks and it says no camping and they politely decline, then you can make the call. Um, but that's probably as far as it can go. Uh, understood. And I appreciate if you <coughs> allow us to close the road, we'll deal with what comes in anyway. And we're not looking for a fight, but we got to keep room for, you know, when, when we're busy, the parking lots are usually like three quarters full. And depending on where people are parking, it can get a little difficult. So, so sir, uh, Tom, is there a place where people, he could send people? Um, I think that the state is not closing, technically, but um, it's public park. State here. complex? So I think the state complex is the best place. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But they couldn't do it overnight. Okay. Gary? Yeah, just a quick clarification question. I certainly understand this concern. Is, is that road and property belong to the town of Waterbury? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So are we going to close other streets and roads <coughs> as well? We've only had one request so far. Okay. Um, and we're yeah. requesting you so want to <laughs> so, No, no, I understand. You request anything up on the hill? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about Stowe Street in front of the school? Um, but... There is that, yes. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I just just wouldn't want to get into a precedent and then the next meeting somebody comes here and says we'd like to close down our roads as well. Yeah, no, I understand. But I, I think uh, he's got a, you know, a particular situation down there. I here. totally get it. I totally get it. I, just don't yeah, want I realize to that you don't want to get into having to pick one road and what about this road. But, and we're talking sawhorses, so if fire trucks got to get in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't quite hear Tom, but did you suggest that signage would help basically no, help no camping, yeah, camping here? No camping, no overnight parking. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know how you know, if people are desperate for a place to park. I don't know if they're not. We're not, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to be overcast and probably snowing. So it's probably <laughs> going to be a problem. Don't say that. Right. Yeah, but, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Mm -hmm. Oh, I brought you all eclipse glasses. <laughs> we have the eclipse planner for the town, so you could give them a pair of glasses. Please make sure them. that your eyes are safe. But um, no, we don't plan on closing any other roads in town. This has been the first one that's been brought up. Um, we have our public parks ideally open the day of the eclipse, um, so that people have as much parking as the town owns as possible. Um, no other parks plan on being closed during the weekend. Um, <coughs> and we have talked with the state office complex to make sure, or to learn as much as we can about what parking would be available that day. Um, more and more private and public employers are um, uh, deciding to not come to work. Um, what we have heard from the state is that they are recommending that people work remotely, work from home, if they can do so, um, and that will allow a lot of parking spaces at the Waterbury State Complex. Um, it's not is guaranteed. The state, is the state okay with that? We have met with the state very regularly. They are going to confirm that that's okay, but they gave us the um, <coughs> information last week that they do, they are requesting that everyone works from home if they can. But there, uh, just one clarification. Um, the Little River and uh, the Dave <coughs> Center and Little River campsite area, those are still closed, right? And, uh, yeah. I believe they are still closed to camping. Mm -hmm. um, the Waterbury Reservoir and Little River are going to be open for viewing the day of the eclipse. Um, that is decided by the state um, parks, 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 parks right. department. Hmm. So the gate will be open? From my understanding, yes. Oh. Pilgrim Park still a no-go? Uh, it's a private right. business. Um, they're not going to be advertising their parking. Okay. So, um, yeah. I, just to clarify, we have no problem. Monday, nothing's going on in the rink till like 5 o'clock, so if people want to park there, that's okay. We don't ask to close the roads Sunday night because we don't care if there's people there 
Yeah. Well, we're not going to advertise it, but mm -hmm. um, so we're asking basically close it around. I think it's around 10 o'clock on Friday night. Open it at like six in the morning. Close it Saturday night at about I think six or seven, and then open again at six or seven in the morning on Sunday. And then after that, it's well, <coughs> As long as they're not blocking green parking. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, what about the parking lot by the trailhead? Is that something you own and do you care if you use it? Um, which trailhead? The uh, trailhead. Yeah. 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 The yeah. block yeah. out. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the the place where the mountain bikers. Uh, park. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Water. Parking area. Yeah, that's um, that's our land. Yeah, it's our land. Um, and officially there's no camping there. I don't know how long it has been. Um, so uh, I guess uh, we would abide by the same rules uh, that uh, it's closed. Uh, I wonder if that's people about to camp, right? I mean, I suppose we could tell people who are in the way you could go park there, but they can't say, oh, you can go park there, and then the next guy shows up. And then, mm -hmm. We're not looking to get into a fight, so I don't know what we're going to do. But anyway. uh, any recommendations from the town officials? I think I think the sawhorses are perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think if there's conflicts along the way, we can match up. Okay. Yeah. Do you think those sawhorses should go in front of Rodney's, as suggested, or should we move them past Ferry Hill Park? Well, the problem with that would be once you get in there, it's going to be difficult to turn around. If some guy shows up with a 30 or 40 foot camper, um, you know, it's easier to keep him out than to turn him around and get him to leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, you're intending to post permanent no camping, no overnight parking signs in the area around the rink. I am not technically allowed to post permanent signs without a permit. Okay. There will be temporary signs, but those are our park Right, rules. that's, I, I'm just saying that eventually I was under the impression that you guys were gonna try and there was no camping as in your town ordinance, right? So. And has anybody been in touch with WADA? Uh, because as it was suggested, uh, a lot of those uh, people that do camp down there are mountain bikers, uh, traditionally. Uh, and been sort of the, the main attraction I, for that I, area. I haven't been right now. You, you park in that little parking lot at your own risk. It's pretty beat up. Oh, yes. true. And I don't think the trails, the bike trails are open <coughs> this time. Yeah, they yeah. shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. So okay. barriers are just going to keep the honest people out. I hate to say the dishonest people. You're just going to move them and drive in. Well, and then, uh, then you just have to have some sort of say, yes, can you please move? Yeah, and if we can suggest that they uh, go behind the uh, state complex, uh, right. they may be just as happy. Yeah, and maybe right on the sign that's put out there, say the additional parking behind the state office complex, maybe have a map or just some directions to get there. I don't it's know. Okay. <laughs> it's not, there's no overnight parking there either, so I think if we direct them to another location, yeah. we're probably not helping ourselves out. Well, <laughs> could, could we, the rink staff, have a place to send them? Is that, other than just saying, get out of here, we don't care where you go. Where should we recommend that? We don't the have any camping location. Yeah. <laughs> I assume Forest Field is not taking any people on their fields. What I understand from John Farr is that they don't intend an opening their parking because of the status of it. Yeah. yeah. But that could change if the weather changes, but I, I won't speak for him. What time do your employees leave on Friday and Saturday? It depends on the schedule. Usually, uh, maybe an hour after the last group is off. Um, I think it was 10 o'clock. Uh, these are approximate times. Around 10 o'clock Friday night, and around 6 or right after probably Saturday night. Sunday night, we don't want to close in. All right, do I have a motion on the uh, request to close River Road? I make a motion to <coughs> close River Road to the ice center uh, to uh, prohibit 
eclipse parking. Okay. I could put it uh, Friday night, April the 5th, close River Road around 10 p.m. Saturday, open the road by 6 a.m., close the road around 6 p.m. Sunday, open the road by 7 a.m. No need to close the road on Sunday night, the ice center. There's nothing scheduled. I have a second. Second. Okay, we'll be seconded for the discussion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, you got your road function. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Work with you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, while we're still on the topic, I will again ask for um, downtown employee parking, like exclusive for downtown employee parking on the day of the eclipse because we're all going to be down, work, down there working and there's a lot of people coming in from out of town who don't <coughs> necessarily live in Waterbury, but they work in Waterbury. Mm -hmm. They're not going to find anywhere to park. That's going to cause our businesses to open later. Okay. Uh, when, what time of day are they going to need to find parking? All day? Well, yeah, most of us open at 10 or noon or, or the employees get in around 10 or noon. And which parking lot would you like to request? It could even be a street, but it, we just don't know. So I mean, probably the one. I have a thought. Mm -hmm. um, I think the town also encourages employees to be remote. I think perhaps we consider closing the municipal lot to everyone but town employees, and then we can do a space count of the remaining spaces. We can essentially give a local employee, a downtown employee, a dedicated space for the day of the eclipse. I don't have well, off the top of my head that might be a couple dozen. But that's one option I think we would do. So I think just like the schools, people would generally leave work at the worst time. Mm -hmm. It would be hard for a lot of like businesses who serve food and for instance <coughs> cooks, wait staff, etc. It's it's awful difficult to do those jobs remotely. <laughs> yeah. The handles aren't long enough. <laughs> I guess I really think this seems like a challenge. I worry very much about our ability to enforce any sort of lottery system, particularly on a day that's likely already taxing employees. Um, yeah. We do have a little funky downtown map that like Laura Brett made way back when of where the downtown is. I mean, I don't want to make you all walk farther, but I feel like the lucky intel of being local is there. Like what would be used, you're, you, you know how to spread word among staff, but like can we give a list of spaces? I just don't yeah. feel like, I guarantee just in terms of like what that process and right. vetting, I just and don't I mean, know that we have the capacity to do that. If we've got 10,000 extra, <coughs> call it, call it for sake of argument, like 2,500 extra cars in town, right? There's 10,000 people, there's 2,500 extra cars, if it's families, you know. Um, and the folks who are working, yeah, especially in all the restaurants, mm -hmm. are gonna need places to park that are probably not in, in the, the privately owned paid lots that we all dislike anyway. Um, <laughs> um, and maybe we encourage parking on one of the side streets. Maybe, you know, that's not exactly in a lot, but it's not in the way either. Yeah. Could I make a similar suggestion to Tom, but maybe 51 South Main? Um, That's the municipal not lot has already been advertised, which is a similar concern that John raised about the ice center, that if we're switching too much of our public plan, we might ha create more problems for us, but we haven't advertised 51 South Main, and that could be a lot that at least employees could know about. Like a local parking only lot? I think if we're gonna, I think if we're gonna do it, we need to somehow um, police it. Somehow police it. Somehow get a list of you know a list of names, um, names, plate numbers, that sort of thing. Get to have the uh, local employers uh, hand out permits. Something like that. Yeah, we can do that. He would work that lot, like right across from Pilgrim Park. You know, we 
that be a good yeah whatever's in walking I mean, whatever's in walking distance of downtown right that, that'd be in walking distance down not as close as the you know the one behind right. propane but that's not that big of a parking right. lot anyway well it's part of my driveway yeah <laughs> problem solved one of your homes <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 Well, I was going to make that suggestion. I was going to say, well, what about you know Union Street or Randall Street? It's out of the way enough where employees can park. It's been discovered. <laughs> <laughs> At least my end has. But uh, no, I, you know, if if it becomes uh, well, let's start with this uh, permit idea uh, for 51 South Main, uh, and then uh, beyond that, if they have crises, uh, I'm sure. Myself and other residents of Randall Street would be willing to help out because we probably have some extra spaces in our driveways. How many spaces are 50 ways? Not that many. <coughs> Depends on how Albert's doing. <coughs> it's, but it's not that big of a parking lot. You know, it'll accommodate some. But, right. and far, far from every so often, HR block is bumping. There's that. <laughs> it is a week before uh, taxes, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start. Yeah, what's up? Gary, do you have a planning meeting this week for folks about Eclipse stuff in town, and when would that be, and how might I attend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, um, so in addition to what we're working on as a town plan, we have had two community, well, we've had one, and we will have another community meeting this week to share out that plan happening this Wednesday at 1 p.m. here in the steel room you can also attend by zoom and you can RSVP to me um, just to give a you all got um, the sheet I provided to you but we have been working to distribute glasses we've been working with the area schools area um, or the library here you can get them and at the rec building um, we will be putting up those temporary no parking and no camping signs in all of our public parks. Um, residents also have access to no parking signs, laminated no parking signs, if they're concerned about their own parking spaces. Um, they can request those from me. Um, and then uh, with Public Works, we'll have additional trash and recycling around town. Um, we have ordered portable toilets that will be around those locations. I will be revisiting having them at the ICE Center. Um, because if the roads close, it doesn't really make sense to have um, five portable toilets at the S Center. Um, so those will probably be redistributed elsewhere around town. Um, Waterbury Fire and Ambulance are aware um, and are prepared as best you can be for what the Eclipse will bring. Um, and then you all talked about this already, but there will be a half day for the schools in the area. So that's also an option for parking. Um, yeah, it's a public law. Um, close enough. Yeah. That will be updated. There will be one road closed on Eclipse weekend, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. that's the plan for now. Um, and then just a reminder that we will also be getting the word out about um, the disc golf course and the nature trails at Hope Davy are annually closed around this time. We don't want more traffic on them during the day of the eclipse. So those close signs will be even more clear then, than they already are. Um, and we have some fun stuff going on. We'll have a world map for visitors coming into town to tell us where they're from, um, and and then plenty of glasses. So if you need glasses, please reach out. And there was one suggestion at town meeting that the fire department organize a coin drop. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> we stopped doing that years ago for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> That is a threat, too. So. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same thing. Okay. Not like the Tunbridge fan. Yes, right? Not like the Tunbridge fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I always get, you have to put my money in. Yeah, yeah. and they get you going, coming and going. You, know? <laughs> you feel like you have to. If you get dirty looks if you don't. Uh, was that? That was the move along <laughs> gesture, yes. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> if amenable to the group. We're a little dense, but I got that one. Um, all right, entertainment permit for the craft fair. Okay, 
Okay, did I get your names? I'm Ashley. I'm Angela. Uh -huh. Okay. And you're the ones who apply for the permit for the craft there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you uh, just uh, give us a bit of uh, an overview of what you have planned? Um, we just kind of like a rough plan right now until we can get actually get down there to walk around the space. But we have um, a bunch of vendors because we host craft fairs at Cross the Brook pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of vendors that have um, want, like shown interest in coming down. Uh, we were actually approached by Katarina because her parents were a vendor at our December event and she suggested that we do a bigger event and use one of um, Waterbury Recreation's spaces. And so we decided that that was a good idea and figured that Dac World would be a good place to make it worthwhile. And we have uh, live music at our events at Cross the Brook already now, um, just like small. We have a single artist, he comes and pretty much every time and he's great. But so that's why we figured we'd do it down there also. Mm -hmm. We have some food trucks that well, not trucks, just small trailers, but they've all shown interest in wanting to come too, and they know they have to get their own permits and do all of that themselves also. Okay. And uh, how many um, uh, people, uh, clients do you expect? Then, um, we have right now 78 that have shown interest. 78 vendors? Vendors, yes, which as the time grows, that number probably will grow because people always wait until closer to the date to see if they're available. Yes. And we also have on reserve five, if we need more um, portalists, because we know that we need them down there also through Wind River. <coughs> yeah. What day is NQID this year? I believe it's the same weekend. Yeah. 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 I'm on the Waterbury website. I can't find how it's best, but I uh, right. <laughs> How many, how many, not vendors, but how many people, spectators or buyers or not do you expect that? We're have? hoping to get as many as we can. We have quite a bit. Our December show, we had over 300 people just at Cross the Brook. Um, it was a pretty successful event, um, and we advertise a lot, so we're expecting to have a pretty significant number down there. The only reason I ask is back row, the parking's a little yeah, limited. Yeah, yeah, we did. We do know that. Um, I'm not sure about parking on the roads or parking elsewhere and walking right, in, but that, that could be. <coughs> like you see that from the salt park yeah, yeah. baseball games. Yep. So. We know that the parade is going on that day, so we know that there's going to be a lot of foot traffic, oh, so that doesn't seem idea. to be a problem for people coming in and out because they're already be on foot. The parade for NQID starts behind the complex, right, mm -hmm. and then it goes down Main Street. Down the South Main Street up to, to basically the hill. And then, but doesn't it come down and go, where does it go after it goes over the hill? It goes down and goes around Union Street. Uh, yeah. The vast majority of them go right down. To right, right. Yeah. Yeah. which we yeah. accounted for. We put that also, we let them know that the road had to be cleared around 3 o'clock and it, nobody could be in the road because we we were aware that they do go through there to turn around. Right. So what's the timing of your event again? Um, so 11 to 6. 11. Six. It does sound like it could be a conflict, honestly, from, from where I'm sitting, but maybe I'm not seeing it uh, correctly. Uh, if, if we have 78 vendors down there and 300 people, uh, and is the parade not going to run into problems uh, as it comes in there? We don't, we, don't, it, we don't expect to have any vendors in the roads at all, like in the actual travel part of the road. So that would be completely cleared for the um, floats and everything else to go through. They would all be in that in, row. Yeah, on the field. So you're, you're, you're thinking all the spectators would be somewhere else. We would make sure, we've already put that in, we, we would can figure out somebody to be down there to make sure nobody is on the road coming. at all, coming in and out until after the parade is done. 
just to eliminate any incidents happening. That's where the conflict would, right. would be. It's the end, you know, the beginning to end of the parade. Right. Uh, yeah, Melissa. Have you done outdoor events before? We have not yet, no. And do you envision a process for um, how would, if I apply to you to be a vendor and all my paperwork's in order, how would I find out where I need to go? Um, we are planning, it, I don't know if droning is allowed in Waterbury, but um, her boyfriend has a drone and we were going to take an aerial picture. We were going to map out exactly where everything was going to be. And we, ha we have made it clear that people have to bring their own canopies, they have to bring weights, and they cannot leave their products overnight. Tables, fine, but they cannot leave anything else overnight. They have to reset those back up the next day. So folks would have a sign space that is yep. where they would be. Yep. Yep. So all your previous events have been at Cross or Pro? Right. Right in the cafeteria. Yeah, my wife's a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just a question, have you considered uh, doing uh, the event at Cross of Brook? Uh, we did, but it, with the amount of interest that people have, there was no way we can't fit them all there. Mm -hmm. And we asked about doing it outdoor, and they didn't, the janitors weren't sure how it would work because they'd never done it down there. And with the solar panels and everything right there, they weren't sure if it was the best choice. Mm -hmm. Can you hand up? Yeah. Uh, I have a few concerns. You said everyone's going to be out of the throughways mm -hmm. for floats and, and trucks and, and the, the parade um, to make their way down there after the parade. And then you have listed food trailers or food trucks that know they need to get their own permits. Mm -hmm. um, and so they would be driving on to the ball fields. Um, we were theory. thinking like at the end, like the last field, going this way, like where the grassy parking area, we would put them there, not on the actual ball fields, because we don't want people actually driving onto the fields. What grassy areas? I'm trying to... Um, the, so like going out, like by the cemetery, there's like a parking space that people park their cars for that last baseball field. So oh, that okay. area there, where people already park their vehicles. From the parking lot over yeah. to Winooski Street. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking that bluff right by the uh, road, so I would be real concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know it sounds like a a, a lot of uh, you've got already seventy eight vendors and then another three hundred uh, participants. Uh, it sounds like a lot of vehicles, uh, and I guess I'd like to see a uh, more detailed plan as to where all those vehicles are. Yeah, we can, we can figure out a parking plan. And also, like I said, it's going to be the weekend that the parade is going on, so these people are already going to be parked and be walking around, and they're not just attending our craft fair, they're attending other events uh -huh. that are going on that day, so it's not that they're just going to be driving in on the field. Uh -huh. Some. We're concerned. Some, yeah. Some yeah, I wouldn't say 100% no, is no, going to no. be, right. you know, attending like the parade and, and all the other considering things. Considering all yeah. the people yeah. that yeah. are going to be on foot. Parade people are crafters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Anne. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I hope that on Winooski Street, where they're talking about parking, somebody fixes that big hole that is currently <laughs> at the that entry. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Yeah, mostly we can just scrape the gravel back into it. It's still there. It's just 50 feet away. Yeah. Um, yes, Ian. Um, I'm just curious who... Um, is, does it make sense to bring in the organizers of that event to talk to them about a separate event? The organizers of oh, the parade? Right, of the uh, parade. That's the, the water water rotary. rotary. Yeah. To yeah. I could kind of speak up part of the Rotary. Right. Matter of fact, I'm on yeah. the NQID committee. So. Sure. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, I guess a question I have is, you know, when the parade ends in Dak Row, it kind of feels like there's a lot of mingling around and does it make sense to have that many people? It seems like an inordinate or large amount of people 
at that moment at the parade's end. Um, Most of the people the Rotary would like to see is that they more attend in that, uh, not that grow, in um, Rusty Parker okay. Park. That's where kind of the center of, you know, all the Rotary activity is. Mm -hmm. So I think there's more people who are going to go to the parade, might go have a beer or cider or something like that at Rusty Parker, there are events with kids and stuff like that, and that will go on until the, um, you know, fireworks. So mm -hmm. people kind of, you know, will make a day of it, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I don't think as many you'll see, you'll see probably some who are just going to say maybe the parade might be parking up toward that road, but I think that's probably a lesser amount, but there's, there's definitely some, there's just, it's difficult parking the day of the parade. And then, uh, I know that the fire department helps with organizing right. this, the start of the parade. I don't know if you're involved with the dissolution of the parade. <laughs> at the no, end. I mean, we set it up, uh, we organize the different sections, right. so you don't have five musical groups all together because they can irritate them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who do you put behind the horses? Yeah. <laughs> so for the political kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, we just set up the, the groups and get them out onto Main Street, and that that was really it. But I will say that most floats do go down here because there's a lot of they kids. Oh, well, there's kids and stuff. Yeah. They're not going to drive either up 100 or anywhere very far at right, most speed right. the kids mm -hmm. are so they do the majority of it other than just like single vehicles do come down here. Yeah. yeah, and then they have to turn around and a lot of them are trailers and you need a certain space to do that. Um, I don't know, it sounds like there, there is some sort of conflict, at least in my mind, and uh, maybe we need a little bit more clarification. Two, two events having simultaneous, it's just I think maybe you may want to work with maybe attend one of the rotary meetings and work with the rotary staff on maybe, or, or even just have maybe meet with our park commi committee who does a lot of the um, stuff for, you know, NQID and try to work out a plan that will work for both events. Okay. But I think as Roger kind of said, I think we don't have a full package of information to make a decision Right, until tonight. we can get down there physically, we can't really, 100% give an in-depth plan. Okay, well, things are starting to dry out. Cheryl, you have your hand up. I, yeah, just a question. What's the time overlap for the two events? Two hours, one hour? They had. They were going from what time in the morning till 6? 11 to 6. 11, 11 to 6. 6. And the parade starts at 5? No. Or four? 3. 4? Four? 3 <laughs> or 4. I, it's kind of a gathering up as a three. So, I mean, I'll show up. They're all looking is there, the can they shorten the craft fair, or is that not feasible, like, to not have them overlap in time? Just as a uh, recommendation to look at how long they have the craft fair. Either maybe start it earlier in the morning, if you guys need that amount of time to do what you're doing, and then have it end by 4 o'clock, and uh, get people out of the... Uh, just a recommendation, something to think about. I'm sure probably on behalf of the crafters, they probably want, want to see because they want to take advantage of the people here for the parade. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that's why you have to work out some sort of uh, a thing that's agreeable to both sides. Mm -hmm. We do have a whole other park, the Waterway Center. Yeah. Might be available, uh, might not have the crowd. You know, right. So, yeah, I, I, I think we may need more, a little bit more work to be done before yeah, we can issue this permit. It's my sense, uh, unless anyone wants to make a motion to approve. Right now. Yes. I have a public comment. Okay. It's going to take me a couple of minutes. So I'll wait till you guys are all set. And then my wife, Don. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Scott Calder. Scott Calder, yeah. For each one of the board members, this is something that my wife and I had set up that we'd like to address when this particular um, craft show, as we'll call it. 
So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Scott Culver. I've lived here my entire life, so 52 years in going. Um, I worked 31 years in the agency of transportation, did a pile of MUTCD. Um, I'm a safety compliance officer for another company in Colchester, Vermont, and I have a uh, vested interest in this because my wife owns a crafting business here in town. So the questionnaire I just handed you are some of the things that I'd like the select board to think real long and hard about how they're going to logistically put this together. So my first question is 100 vendors. 100 vendors is 100 cars, 100 trucks, 100 trailers. I do not believe that the capacity on Dak Row Field can even hold the capacity of the vehicles that are supposed to be attended in this program. On top of that, where do customers park? On top of that, uh, parking on the grass. We were told last year, because my wife and I did an annual event last year on the NQID, we sat in front of this group a year ago and asked for permission. We received it. We did 32 vendors. We had, yep, that's fine. We had 32 wow. vendors. We had 12 volunteers. And I'll tell you right now, it was an undertaking, even with 32 vendors. Mm -hmm. We used the front field. We laid it out. Cars were not allowed to park to the front because we had to have handicap accessible to be able to get people in and out. Um, we had individuals monitoring the main road inside and out for access and egress open the gate in Winooski Street so we didn't do anything down there to be able to move around. And we cut this program off exactly one hour, Donna, two hours? One hour. Three one hour parade. before the parade happened because we had vendors that, that will pack up and will leave. And the last thing we wanted was parade floats and kids and everything else moving through at the same time while the parade was going on. So. Parking on the grass was not allowed, and in the present condition of the recreational field down there right now after the winter flood, I would have a hard time believing you're going to get that back for, for them to be able to put that type of uh, you know, influx on that property. And on top of that, being, a, being a, uh, a Waterbury community member for many years, if I remember correctly, we moved our 4th of July festivities off of that row because of all the damage with roads and cars and everything else that happened down there. So you will put it, you'll put an event the same size as your festivities for the 4th of July on there and you're gonna accrue tens, tens of thousands of dollars of damage that you're gonna to have to fix for a two day event. So who will be directing traffic? That's my next question. And then access and egress into the facility, you need to keep both lanes open for fire and ambulance. So there's another piece that's gonna be hard to do because when my wife and I had done the event last year, we had people parking on the inset coming in off of Main Street and we had to have them move. We're talking 32 cars. 32 cars stayed in the parking lot. They did not go anywhere to the grass <coughs> area, no damage. So five food trucks is the same thing scheduled. So now where do you put food trucks in that whole mix at the same time? <coughs> also on the flyer, there's bounce houses and dunk tanks. Okay, these are carnival items, these are not craft oriented. And your NAICS number for a crafter, when you uh, have a... Do they have the flyer? They, 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 they will when I have a packet I've set up for And I just, just want to be respectful, Scott. Clearly you have so much expertise on this. I know you came to us for a parade as well and we called you back and you came out with, I think what we've used is the model transportation plan for <laughs> subsequent parades. So I, I want to acknowledge your expertise. I want to also, also acknowledge that we have applicants here who came and presented. Yep. I hear that you have comments and critiques for us to consider. I think Roger said we are not comfortable ruling on this applicant tonight. No one has made a motion to approve this proposal. Perfect. You've given us a set of considerations here. And I think for tonight, is there certain high levels? I just want to be mindful of that we don't no, no, I get it, and I understand that. So like if, if there's, I, I, I have your sheet here, I'm taking notes, I'm listening, um, but would say I think, again, we, the board is not planning to take application so, action on it as presented tonight without getting further Thank you. So, and I, I'll just finish with this, I won't hold up your meeting. So I feel this event is uh, being perceived as an extension of the traditional event that we need, you know, and, and we'll need a lot of attention on Saturday night due to vehicles parking the DACRO facility to get a seat for the fireworks. Um, the entrance here will also not contribute to fireworks, which is a huge portion of the Rotary NQID's funds for putting on the fireworks show. After the festivities are all over, there will be a lot of confusion in regard to vehicles and people exiting the event and making their ways home. So I will, I will leave you with that. 
Um, I have a packet for the select board, so if you want to, if you want to take it, I'll, at the end of your meeting, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, do you have a copy that you can send to the town clerk? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, I want to hear what your yeah, comment is. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but legally, in the city, I was told that I had to legally get an LLC to be legally to legally host craft fairs for more than 25 mm -hmm. vendors. I've checked um, Donna's, and it is only for retail. It is not to host craft events. Mm -hmm. I was made to do this. I have insurance for event coordinating, mm -hmm. and I, I went and I went. I did that. Okay. Um, how much time do you think you're going to need to address the issues that were? Until, it, just as long as we can get in there, that's it. Uh, walking in? We can walk in, yes. yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, you need to walk in tomorrow. Okay. Uh, it's pretty firmed up from what I can tell. <laughs> uh, things are reasonably firm this week. Uh, so yeah, I would say why don't you get in there. We can either put this on the agenda for the 1st of uh, April or for the 15th of April. Um, the 1st would be the best because we have to have liability forms in by May 28th, so we need to make sure we have time if it is approved for that okay, to so happen. That would give you enough time to address the, all the issues that we're talking about tonight? I might advocate for the second meeting in April, just personally, just in terms of time. I mean, if they're ready, I'm just, I know that meeting is already a very full agenda, just because we have school board and a yeah. million other things. If it's oh. workable, I, I, I don't That's know. That's fine. I just want to. I know it's a hard for you either day, so I don't want to. I'm fine. just Whatever's trying to figure out how to balance us okay. having a cohesive plan we can approve in a meeting. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. getting a full month. I, I do suggest that you also touch base with the uh, Rotary. Uh, yeah. NQID is an established. Dan, Dan, uh, Dan McKibben. Dan McKibben. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll put this on the agenda for the 15th of April, 7 o'clock. That's that's when we get started. Yeah, yeah we'll try we'll try to make it uh, early an earlier part of the meeting. All right, thank you for coming in. Thank Appreciate you, guys. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have uh, congressionally directed uh, funding uh, application for funding of a new pool. Katarina. Hi again. Um, uh, so the last few years since 2020, um, our congressional delegation has announced funding that you can apply for that falls in a, a number of different buckets that has to fit issue areas. Um, when I met with Tom, we were considering, er, and they announced it with a very short window to apply for it. So this announcement came last week. Applications are due by April 8th. Um, so in, in talking with Tom, um, we were trying to think, what do we have ready that could be in an application by April 8th? And we thought about how we just had the pool study um, completed uh, and that that would be a really um, you know, primed uh, project that we could apply for this funding. Um, so Senator Sanders announced the funding again with the deadline of April 8th. Um, we have, or I have a application ready to hit send that would, um, uh, which focuses on um, a new pool facility in Waterbury. Um, it, it, I guess that's where I'll leave it. I'll see what questions you have and um, I think that's the nature of this agenda. Mm -hmm. How much would we be asking for? I have the application asking for the full amount, which is 4.5 million. I am not under the impression that we would get all of that money, but it seems like when we have an opportunity like this in front of us, we should ask for everything um, and, and mm -hmm. get fraction if we can. And that's a new pool house too, correct? Yes. Right, new house. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, is there a uh, municipal match for these grants? It depends on what bucket the funding um, comes from. For instance, like USDA Rural Facilities funding um, requires a match and it's based on your town median income. Um, Waterberries is pretty high, so um, uh, has a high median income, so therefore not a, a great match, if any. 
um, but there are other buckets of money that either do have a match or or don't have a match that um, maybe the senator's office could direct us towards which one it would fall into. So right now, as the application stands, it says, we think that this project could fit into many of those buckets and we would request the senator's office guidance um, to determine where it would fall if chosen. Other questions? Mike. I'm not a pool guy. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what this <laughs> what, what, no, what the, yeah. pools are very complex and I know expensive, but what's the difference between a 60 mil PVC, a coated concrete, a PVC coated stainless stainless steel? We, can, and we went into this in some detail. I looked at every size bonus pool in the state and then he went and looked at a bunch of other commercial pools that are outdoors. Okay. Um, the current it's a concrete pool currently. It has a it has a fiberglass it's a fiberglass or PVC. Fiberglass. fiberglass. No fiberglass. Yep. Um, when that was put on the pool decades ago, it essentially failed immediately. It didn't didn't quite right. appear right. Um, so all that gets scraped out. Um, the walls are fine. Uh, the, the the if you look at page six of the report, it refers to how much water we're losing. You know, so the pool is a little over half a million gallons and, and between the seven inches of rain we had last summer and the, and the water we put into it, we put more than the pool. Mm -hmm. um, we lower it for the winter and it stays low. So it's all in the piping for the filtration system where the water loss is. That has a huge impact on just swimmability because it's cold. We're just filling it all the time. Um, okay. Alec did a lot of work. Um, we found a few pools that have stainless steel liners that, are, that, have, the, that have been a PVC on top. They're quite a bit more expensive. Um, he, initially, he initially was not thinking that deeply about the 60 mil PVC, and 60 mils is it's like a couple of inches. It's, it's thick. Um, but he's found other commercial pools in the area that have been in operation for decades. Um, large outdoor pools. I think he found several at campgrounds in the area. So he's he's decided that's a, a reasonable low cost solution, low cost being relative or at four and a half million. Now what's the advantage? I see it their, their prices with dome or without. I assume the dome is like what St. Albans has there. Yeah, we haven't delved into that in, in any great detail. Um, but one of the questions I asked of him is do you do you need to engineer and design the pool differently if you were ever going to make it a year-round dome pool. Well, that's what I was thinking. And, and, and the, answer, the answer is really no. It, it's minor. Um, so you can, you can retrofit a pool pretty easily from that perspective. Alyssa. So to clarify, our ask for tonight is just around approving this application. I just want to acknowledge, like, this is a big, complicated study. I also am not a full expert. I received 15 pieces of information. I just went through it all. I have not fully digested it. Um, but too, what too I'm much hearing, information. My question for Katarina, is this to Senator Sanders, Senator Welch, or both? This one's to Senator Sanders. Is there a specific reason you would pick one versus the other, or would you? It was just the email we got first. Okay, yeah. I will say yeah. I have a CBEDC newsletter that says both Welch and Sanders have one open till April eighth. I don't know if it's a different application if that's more work. Um, I do know that the ambulance I think got an earmark from Sanders, and who does EFA? EFA got an earmark from Sanders. So we're both one and one. So I guess there's no um, compelling reason to not. not um, I guess my perspective is one. I really appreciate you all seeking grant funding. Just to name, you said it at town meeting, but like we got go rec funding for other recreation upgrades. Um, so to me, if we don't have another competing project, there's truly no reason to not submit this. Um, I don't know if you need letter of plus or sorry, letter of support or any of those things to help for that. But for me, it's. I don't see a lot of downside to making this ask. I was wondering about picking one versus the other, but seeing as we've received from both in the municipality, even if not the town, I would support applying to both. Because they did on that CAX report I saw it tonight, they specifically mentioned pools. Really? That, yeah, that oh. kind of that kind of hmm. hit my eyeball a little bit because I knew it was on tonight's agenda. So it's definitely something worth looking into. Free money's always good. <laughs> and him off. Uh, yeah, um, on memory here, 
We used to have a dome over the tennis courts, if any remembers, and there was a heavy snowfall and the dome collapsed. So I'd be curious as to what the proposed dome would be made of and how structurally sound it would be for a heavy snowfall. So that's not really something we're proposing at this stage, essentially to replace the pool. Um, part of it is um, we haven't done a market analysis about the dome. So it's one thing to build it. It's another thing to operate it in the winter. You need to staff it. You need to obviously heat it. Heat it. You need to put it up and take it down each year, which is not something we would do. It's something we contract out at, at a pretty penny. So we're not we're not there yet, and that's one of the fundamental challenges. If you were year round, if you if you're a year round pool, you need a year round staff. Um, so the first thing yeah. I'll tell you is we need a we need a you know a budget for a pool manager, you know, which we don't have. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just you know it was everybody was so upset when we lost year round tennis. So <laughs> you didn't lose any tennis players, did you? <laughs> I would say that um, we did go to the St. Albans um, pool the day they were um, putting the dome on it, which was very neat to see. And their dome is actually inflatable, so it's a, it's a really thick, I don't even know what the material is, but very thick inflatable material, um, which which does help um, snow slope sure. off of it. So yeah. it's like, like those, those snow. tennis courts that just like a big puff thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alyssa. Yeah, that, Sorry, yeah, go ahead. That's what the old one was. It was inflatable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, but. Maybe they figured out something new. Well, it's also a pool three times bigger than ours. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just much bigger. With, with um, surrounded by an area where there's essentially no other options. There, there's. No other towns that are there with municipal pools. Lake Champlain and St. Albans Bay is really not so well. Yeah. Um, so it's Saint a different. Bay, certainly not. It's a different world um, from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Alyssa. My follow-up was that I was really enthusiastic to staff, but not trying to create needless work. Do you think it makes sense to apply for Welsh? Just to say that was an idea, but if you think it's not compelling, given that EFA has been funded recently, I. Just wanted to withdraw that to say I'm supportive yeah, of it. I mean, the, the last round of, of Welsh's approvals was something like 25 million, um, and EFA got almost 10 percent of that. So I think it was a pretty hefty, yeah. pretty hefty mm -hmm. round there. Um, then I guess I will, and then I guess my second question for us is like, are we? I assume we're going to reconsider this in more detail at a subsequent meeting, or did Tom or Katarina need more direction from us tonight regarding alternatives generally? So if there's funding, um, I have an estimate from Weston and Samson, which is an engineering firm that has a specialty in pools of this size, um, to, to engineer it um, to the bid phase is around a quarter million dollars. As part of that, which is rolled into all this, um, but but as part of that process, you would see really developed plans about exactly what would be built. Um, Alex work gave us um, living numbers that are solid enough to apply for the grant. Um, in the end, the, the bid is the bid. So I think the grant application should be Alex numbers. If we assume the grant is awarded, that's unlikely to happen before November. Um, even when it's awarded, you're still you still going to complete the engineering, put it to bid. So you're you're probably best case scenario of construction in 2026. Um, and then we have the other challenge of the gate arms, the reservoir being repaired around that time. And so we, we probably want to be careful about not having the reservoir or a public pool to swim in in the same summer. So yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of timelines that move, but I think we've got the opportunity in front of us. And the grant would cover the engineering, that quarter million dollars. It's all part of the part of the proposal. All right. Did I hear a motion? Uh, sorry, that's, that's all right. Um, just a quick question: If the grant gets approved and there's a matching fund, 
we're gonna have to dig that out of our butt somewhere. Um, if for some reason that can't be done, uh, are you, if you get the grant, are you completely committed to it or? Okay. No, we can refuse the money. Yeah, yeah, we can't find the other match. Yeah. But I did talk with Rebecca Ellis, and she said that uh, one of the benefits of these congressional earmarks is that they tend to have a very low match requirement compared to other federal funding. It certainly needs to be done. Okay. Uh, any other comments? I have just one yeah, quick yeah. question. Um, it's my understanding that the pool would occupy the same footprint, the new pool would occupy the same footprint as the current pool. Is there ever consideration to adjust that footprint? Yes. Okay. Um, that, that's actually in, in Alec Tuscany's work. Um, at some point, I don't know if I asked the question or Katarina asked the question or Public Works Director asked the question, but the idea came up, do we do we demolish the pool we have just enough to put in some clean fill? And is it then cheaper to build on the other side of Anderson Field and, and move the ball field in essence or figure some different site plan? Um, and at first blush, it seems like, well, that might not be crazy um, given how expensive demo is. Um, we're not trucking all this material to wherever it's going. Um, but he ran the numbers, and it's, it's just not feasible to do that. It's, it's a few hundred grand extra for no tangible gain. Um, so in the end, um, yeah, we looked at it, but just the, we didn't see a, we didn't see a, just any obvious gain to moving it. Um, you know, Hope Davies spoken for, and all the other town parks are just not suitable. The ice center's obviously in the floodplain. Yeah, Anderson Park is the only park not in a floodplain, so um, if we were to build in one that does have a floodplain, I think there's additional permitting and requirements associated with that. That's just not a brilliant idea. <laughs> yeah. And that's so, so yeah. the pool, pool would go right where the current one is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a motion? Or more comments? I was just going to say, what exactly are we moving? Are we to compel? the town manager and direct director to apply for these grants? Is that what the motion would be? Uh, I, I don't know if it's compel, it's more like a per, uh, authorized, authorized submission of the grant. We, we can't give you exact specifics in the dollar amounts. Um, we can give you the application once it's complete, but I think it's authorized the grant application and concept to build a new pool, replace the current fuel with Anderson fuel. And associated Filter building and pool house. Who wants it? I move to authorize that the town manager and rec director apply for Senator Sanders' grant. I believe is it. What was the rest of that? Uh, for, for, the, right? for the for the pool <laughs> for the pool and associated buildings and associated <laughs> buildings. <laughs> <laughs> That's formal enough. At Anderson Field yeah. for a ballpark cost, total cost of approximately 4.5 million second. Mm. Accept the friendly amendment? I accept the friendly <laughs> amendment. Oh, come on, I was not writing that. <laughs> 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 the first person I looked at was Karen. Uh, Kate's motion had it, we don't need it, but for the record, at the existing location at Anderson Field, um, for a budget of approximately four. Moved and seconded. And she seconded it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, now we have armory update. Tom, do you have an update for us? Sure, just a, just a brief update. The, um, so the state has been doing internal work on the building. They've replacing the sewer line, and they don't need a permit to do this work, they're replacing the sewer line. There was a break in their sewer line um, some time ago, about a decade ago, no quote on the exact year, um, which was repaired obviously, but they've, they've decided to go ahead and replace that. They're doing a new electrical service, putting in a sprinkler system. Um, late last week they had delivered um, the temporary walls. Um, I spoke to Commissioner Chris Winters last week about proposed use of facilities, and we talked about the, the timelines and the DRB process. Um, the challenge 
I think we have and he has is that the, the homeless program is in a state of flux, to put it mildly. Um, I believe his, his perspective, his position is that given it's in a state of flux, there, there might be a need for an emergency shelter there um, at some point. Um, my understanding is that the hotels don't have necessarily legal obligation to, to be part of the program, so if hotels were not part of it overnight, then, then there's a challenge they've got to figure out. Um, the DRB does plan to hear the, uh, hear the permit appeal in April. Uh, their first meeting in April. That's on the tentative agenda. I don't believe that's finalized yet, but that's on a tentative agenda. Um, the DRB has their own legal process. Um, what I, part of what I did say to Chris is, um, I don't think it's a great um, introduction to the community when you start by appealing a permit requirement. Um, so I would be tickled pink if they would simply withdraw that and apply for a permit. But they, they might have other ideas and other, other thinking than, than we do and then our council does. Um, but I think the long and short of it is they're still planning on having the building ready for April 1. And they still don't have any short-term plans to use it for anything other than a uh, temporary homeless shelter. But it's still a bit of a complex and long timeline if they enter for Ian may not have heard this yet. The DRB hears the appeal of the permit requirement. Um, they have 45 days to make a ruling. They can do it quicker, but that's their, that's their deadline, which, which in theory brings us into mid-May. Um, if the DRB overrules the zoning administrator, the state is free to operate as a homeless shelter that, that day. The DRB does not overrule the zoning administrator. Um, the state can apply for a permit, in which case the DRB has 60 days to hear the application. Uh, or they can go to uh, the Environmental Division of Vermont Superior Court, we always just call it E-Court. Um, and that's its own process. The state probably has some ability to do that faster than the average citizen um, who would do an appeal, but it's still likely months. And the DRB being a quasi-judicial body and, and having a great deal of independence um, has their own process, and, and I don't, I don't direct that process in any way. It's, it's driven by them and their, their access to council and staff. And you've not received a uh, permit request. Not received a permit request. So was there. I think we, we remain in uh, holding pattern waiting for April third. Um, I'm relatively confused. Um, <clears throat> this evening on the local news, they talked about the four sites that had just opened. Two of them had zero residents in there. The other two had definitely un un well under 50, you know. Yes. I'm just curious if what's the need? I know there's a homeless. I, I have no question, but are people going to, you know, it's not like the old saying, if they build it, they will come. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the same information. They had planned for something like a, a temporary gap in the hotel program. Right. Hundreds of people would be, would be out of, essentially out of, out of the bed for about a week. So they, they, they staff these shelters, have them ready, and they generally weren't used. Mm -hmm. So right. it, when I say it's in flux, it's in, it's in flux. Okay. Um, and it would not shock me if the, if the armory is not used as a homeless shelter. Yeah, because the ones that they showed on <clears throat> the news report, they were basically like rooms with a bunch of cots. You know, and that's yeah. not even partitioning. Would it work for a craft fair? <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous idea. <laughs>
It's actually going to be. <laughs> and they, they've also indicated to me they, they like the armory in general because it is flexible space that they can they can modify over time and, and if they've got short term needs it's a big open area. Other questions? I have a concern. Um, that's the third time that Chris Winters has changed his tune on what this facility will be used for, so now emergency is on the table. I mean, it was always short term, it was like short -term emergency, right. if you will. Um, you know, that remains on the table. I think the timing is uncertain, and then whatever, whatever we need is uncertain. I did read that the state, not learning from our debates here, well, pretty much did the same thing in Rutland and surprised everyone with a 100 bed homeless shelter proposal. Well, it may overstop. And that's, yeah, that's what we're for. Yeah, that's yeah, what we're for. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa? Uh, okay. Don't throw my hands down. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that sometimes things are, aren't always as they're perceived to be. Um, throw this into the mix just to give you a clue as to what perhaps some of this is about, maybe not so much this homelessness thing, but yet again, I believe that maybe some of it is. As I had said at one prior select board meeting a year and a half or so ago, Teresa Wood was sitting here and I said, until the state legislative body under starts to understand it, and recognize that some of these homeless people are homeless because they want to be, not because they have to be. Uh, we're never going to solve this problem. Today, I ran into a gentleman up at the mobile station that I haven't seen in 15 years, probably. At least 10, probably closer to 15. He's a developer slash real estate agent. He is responsible for the buildings that are over here by the roundabout that are, that are inside the gate. The small ones? Yeah, mm -hmm. all those units there. He was tiny houses. houses. What's that? The tiny houses. Yeah, and he was also responsible. In fact, I had the option, first option, to, to buy the property where all the condo units are above, across from the car wash. Oh, uh, Marsons. Years ago, and I passed it up. Was not something I was interested in getting involved in. But he was telling me he's got a big project in Morrisville going on right now. He said, I'm 76 years old, it's the last one I'm doing, because we were talking about retirement one day. Anyway, he said to me, we got talking about the issue of the armory and some of the other political issues going on. He said, Chris, you wouldn't believe it. He said, as part of this project that I'm doing, some of it has to be I'll call it, he, and he, these were his words, Section 8 housing, low incomes, or Section 8. A woman had approached him and applied, wanted to apply for one of the applications for one of the units. And as they were talking, she said to him, don't repeat this, but I make $4,000 a month under the table. And he said to her, and why are you applying for Section 8? And she said, because it's free money. Needless to say, he said, she's not getting an application. But that's some of the issues that I think we're dealing with in this state uh, where people are probably circumventing the process to put themselves in a different position at taxpayers' expense. Uh, not to say that, you know, when I see a gentleman up here by this light on, on Bank Hill, young guy, physically able to have a job, and he's standing there with a sign asking for money with his pedal bike beside the guardrails at the light, I'm thinking to myself, I'm sure that this guy is probably homeless. And I know you came, you, you had a couple of 
comments at the last couple of meetings where you suggested that perhaps you were homeless too. Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing. I left home when I was 17 with a shirt on my back and my $700 car, and that's all I had. And I can't tell you how many nights I spent in that car sleeping up at the gravel pit, which is now the, the water treatment plant, or any other place that I could find. And it took me years to, to kind of pull my head out and do the right thing to put, and, and do what was necessary for myself, and it was a struggle. Uh, so, you know, I understand where some people are coming from. It's, it's that issue that everybody's faced with, or at least most people are faced with when they leave home. Uh, if you don't have the right guidance, you don't have the right money behind you, it can be an absolute struggle. I've got a couple right now that I know that are friends of mine that are losing their apartment after three years. Uh, they simply don't have any place to go. In fact, his wife said to me, uh, Chris, you know a lot of people, we're looking for a place somewhere in the Duxbury, Waterbury area. I gotta have my, my mother with me because we're taking care of her too. So it's him, her, and, and his, mo his mother-in-law. And uh, they've looked at different places. I can't look at you, Chris, because Scott's right behind you, and so it's not fair if I let, no, 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 because I said, Scott, it's a long meeting. You probably should wrap yeah, it up. No, so I will. in fairness to Scott, I'm saying, Chris, it's a long yeah, meeting. So I just want to put that out here to let me know I just want that. to comment. This is an early You understand where they're going. This is a difficult issue to, right. no, to navigate, it. and uh, it, it's upsetting to a lot of people um, for many reasons. And, and, uh, Okay, well, thanks for sharing. Uh, yes, yeah, Scott. So let me just chime on a little bit about what you know, right, 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 right along with Chris. I'm the guy who spends 50 plus hours at the gas station watching the painting. Were you the guy that he was talking to? <laughs> <laughs> after, no. after the sign. Okay, after the sign. I also watch those same individuals take their dirty trench coat, put it on, and go pay and handle for two hours, and then come down and get in their brand new car and leave. Hmm. So we are never going to solve this right here. Okay. Well, we the, there's a screening process that's failed us. There's a state process that's failed us, and we're the one who's going to take a big bite out of that big turd sandwich until they figure it out. So we all see it. We all know it. We all know at least six people that probably abuse the system. I don't know what the answer is, but as long as we in this room take their, our due diligence and make sure that we put the <coughs> people in those correct situations, I, I think we'll we'll be doing we'll be better off that way. So thank right. you. Good. Well, thank you for, for those comments. Uh, we don't have anything more. Uh, a couple of you, people have noticed that we are a bit behind on the agenda, so maybe we can move forward unless there's more to talk about. Um, and we'll continue to keep updated on this issue. FEMA, uh, we have a request from uh, Sparky Ferris. Yes, um, same guy for me and same FEMA information you've received before. Um, He's interested in pursuing the buyout, and this is for the, the big property right here. Um, it's a bit of a challenge, given there's some estate issues, given there's some other encumbrances on the property, but it's a, I think it's a really good candidate for a buyout. Mm -hmm. um, he has some counsel we're working with, um, trying to get through it. Um, so I'm hoping that the board is interested in, in considering this. Similar to the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions? Do you want to give him 700 bucks? Damages? And I believe that was from the prior flood. Oh. Uh, so he's, he's walked away from it this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the challenge here, of all things, is the bank. Something I've learned throughout this is that when banks start a foreclosure process, they sometimes there's just a certain inertia there, and, and, and they know the different branches, the different firms don't talk to each other. Um, I think it's in the bank's interest to take the buyout in this case. And I'm trying to, and his counsel and FEMA is even trying to get that through. 
um, but we'll see. So the, the biggest concern I have is if the buyout is essentially approved, but along the way, the bank forecloses to take ownership, will the whole thing is shot. And so FEMA needs uh, town approval for this yes. buyout. So, uh, There's a signature and a notary page that pulled in there. Having spent most of my adult life in banking, especially dealing with real estate matters, <coughs> banks don't want to take things in, in, into their possession. They'll only take it when it's absolutely necessary and there's no alternatives. If there's a way to do something, you know, they're, they're not going to just walk away from their money, but if there's a way to do something that they get so much on the dollar at, at, that's reasonable, it's better than what they may recoup, they probably will consider take, taking that off. I so think the buyout does that for them. It, the bank, okay, that, that was going to be my question. The buyout would be equitable to meet their mortgage. Because it has to be a pretty much a supposed $2,700 a month. Yeah, I just saw that. It's about $230,000 owed on the property. Never mind bank fees. Wow. But if there's no buyout, I issued a substantial damage letter to this property. Right. So essentially what you can do is demo it and build above the floor plane, which in that point is, top of my head, probably five feet. Right. That's not likely an easy project either. No. Melissa? Is the state still covering the 25% local share match as of now? Um, I also heard there was something that they're prioritizing properties. Is that something you've heard about or are we not eligible? I've heard about that. They haven't told me what their process for prioritization is, uh, but they are certainly doing that. That being said, the other bio, once we submitted, state has approved and sent to FEMA. Great. But I'm still told in general six to nine months to get a dollar amount, at which point the owner can say yes or no. I'll move to approve the buyout request for 33 North East Street. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. I'll sign as the first grantee. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the past, I've had an application that's been signed by the applicant, and then you've all signed it. This one is blank, so. Um, I don't know if Tom is Clark doing his own. We're working. We're working on that. Okay. okay. So I'm signing and you'll memorize that. So you just three eighteen twenty four. Okay. And uh, next item is uh, the agenda for the next meeting. Do you know if the, uh, Scott's planning to do a uh, Little League parade? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. I would assume yes. Okay. But you know what happens when we 
any other suggestions? Yes, Mike. Doesn't necessarily have to go on to this meeting, but I've had a couple of people within the last uh, week or two approach me about uh, handicapped parking within the village. I know we have, you know, handicapped parking, you know, at the offices here. There are some others in other places, but right in the core downtown where people are going to shop and you know, transact businesses there, you know, and I thought that would, I, you, you don't think about it, but I said, I'm surprised that we don't have like at least one designated spot in the downtown area, if not a couple. Well, the pay for it parking lot there too. Right. I understand that, but. Well, do they, right. uh, would they have to pay? Because my understanding, anyone who has a handicapped pad doesn't pay for parking at all. I know public, like if you go to Montpelier, you could go to any of the meters and don't, you don't have to put money in the meters. Hmm. If, you know, if you have either your handicapped pads on your plate or you have your placard. Let me talk to Bill Woodruff and review it. Um, I don't know offhand where all the handicapped spaces are, but I know there's, you know, when the downtown was redesigned, there's code related to that. And I'm, right. I'm sure we follow it, but if, if the request is to try to find a, another space, we should designate handicapped. But you know how that's right in the core, you know, by Bank Hill. I think that's a reasonable request. You know, you know, someone who's handicapped, you know, even if you go back by Pro Pig, that's a little bit of a walk for, for, for someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't throw a whole parking ordinance, but I like it. Tom's I more actionable response. So right. That's that. something I think is an immediate thing. I think yeah. it's something that we can mm -hmm. react to fairly easily. Mm -hmm. uh, the parking ordinance, I think, is a lot bigger. The town manager said he'd already look into it. Maybe he can get so, back to us. Uh, I think we can do that first. first. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yes. Thank can, you. Um, can we get an update, Tom, um, next meeting on the rental registry? I have our Maybe a charter update if it's moved at all. Hopefully it is. Yeah. Um, can somebody please tell me what happened to the signature page of the? Got it right here. Um, I didn't know where to add lines or if I should, so I stopped. I think you just need the two. So Tom did the witness. Okay. I think this is fine. Mm -hmm. Two double fill. Any other uh, suggestions for? Uh, the April first agenda. Roger, I requested payment of special articles policy and work with Tom to help yeah. draft it for our approval. And then if um well, we, you can, we, can we do that when I'm here? Oh yeah, sorry, you're not, I'm you sorry, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Oh please. please. Yep, yep, yep. That's yep. A good that was my bad. We could also do uh animal control ordinance. Oh yes. I want to oh, yes. No, I mean I'm yeah, able to miss, do it. We missed that one last time. We have plenty of um more time Look, sensitive. Karen, I do want to. Karen, you want to be here for that? Do you want to I mean, he does. I probably <laughs> should be here for that. Do I? You asked if I want to. Yeah, that, was, that was the question. <laughs> you can zoom in from wherever you're. No, no, no I'm not zooming <laughs> in from wherever. No. Um, can we afford to wait uh, another yeah. two weeks for that one? My question though is, in terms of waiting, planning commission approval and adoption of bylaws. Do we have that on the fifteenth? Okay. Because it has to be warned because it's here. Mm -hmm. I mean, all my notes say it. <coughs> Great. I no, I just wanted to confirm. I lost track of when we were yeah, visiting the, that. The interesting note there is once the PC advances the bylaws to you, they're considered in effect. Huh. With or without there are before or without our, our, with our votes. That's my that's my understanding is when they're advanced to you by the PC. No, we can ask for substantive changes and then they go back to them. <laughs> this is why everyone go to the hearing. Yeah, it's a process. So don't forget all your board appointments are in that mix. You know, the first or the 15th. Mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. should be done by April 30th. School board recommendations could go quick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to just hit all Try of again, quick, Scott? Uh, are you going to ask the board about your parade? I was going to actually approach you in February, but I knew you had town meeting day and all the other appointments and stuff happening, so I just found 
in the armory, to take some of my back. so I left it away. Okay, but I can lock you in with I'm, all these I'm other gonna, I'm basically going to turn around and I'm going to present the same plan that we used last year because I thought it was absolutely perfect. <coughs> so we have exact, we have 112 players signed up already, which is 42 over last year at this time. I'm anticipating somewhere in April probably another 30 to 40, so we're going to look at about 160, 180, which, which is just unreal. So I want to follow the same identical diagram as I presented to you last year. I want to, I'm going to stay away from the <coughs> that day Saturday, which is the 4th of May, and I want to, I want to present something to you um, for the 11th of May. Well, that would be the day that I'd like to, like to hop in and, uh, and do the parade. It'll be the same half mile route, same direction. Um, I will have ENS Transport again, who's going to provide us backers. Um, I've already got 14 volunteers for traffic control. I'll speak with Celia in the town in regards to cones and flags. I'm providing vests. It's a half mile run down onto Park Row. Okay, we'll put you on an agenda. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't want you to have to repeat yeah, this all again. It sounds like he's so detailed that you can do I'm a serious guy. You can always prove it. Yeah. I'm and you'd be prepared to come in on the 1st of April? What's that, sir? 1st of April for your, uh, do we get your application? Uh, you can have my application tomorrow if you'd like. Sure. Right. Any time this week. Awesome. All right. Now we'll yeah, but you won't see him the 8th and 13th. We're taking him to Florida. <laughs> okay. We'll yeah, you guys are going to be here for Eclipse. I'm going to be with my grandson for his birthday and visit me. Perfect. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everything you do. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks for coming. Um, anything so else we want to I talk see. about? Board recommendations. So we have hardwood and RV. Is Karen teaching now has a date advertising all the other vacancies and will take whoever applies by this meeting at this meeting and subsequent at subsequent? Well, I, I, to, to do the board appointments, in my opinion, by April 1st might be a slightly small window. For yeah. People. Yeah. Um, and I would, my preference would be to do them all at the same time. Yeah. So, with that in mind, I guess I'd rather do those on the 15th. But that does crash into the bylaws. And the animal ordinance. I don't think the payment for special articles policy is terribly complicated. No. Yeah. Um, but that's that's probably a full agenda right there. Do you have the people board. volunteering for the school board? Um, you know what? I didn't look today, Mike. I should have. I did not look today, but there is one that I know of that's in there. Yeah. So there's a shared doc that was um, created by the superintendent, and I can look at that shared doc. And when I last looked at it, because we only have one, we might need some time to get some more interest. To, well, you said if you want to get the whole they're going to want you to appoint one. I know. That's all you have, and, and we can continue. Oh, just to appoint it. one. I, I I think so. I mean, given Even the situation. Even though we have four slots. I mean, I didn't specifically ask that question, but given the circumstances, you have two vacancies, and I think they'll ask you to. Meet and consider the one applicant if that's all they have. Yeah, yeah understand. You know, because they got to put together a budget and do all another reload, they have to, and they have to keep so, on marching yeah. on. So, I don't. I don't believe they're going to ask you to wait. No, I think they're going to ask okay. you to take consideration of it. And you know, we don't know how many we're gonna, uh, candidates we're going to get, and it can take some time. Uh, so I'd be uh, interested in getting any early uh, requests done on the first, uh, just to fill out what we can. Because I don't think this is going to be a particularly long, uh, we'll, let's see, much uh, controversy, but uh, all of these events have been run in the past. I don't think we're going to be facing any, as much controversy as we faced earlier this evening. Um, so uh, I think the more the merrier uh, on the first, so that we can Takes more time with new candidates uh, on the 15th. We also could piece around the 15th starting earlier if we have the hearing. I don't know well, if what folks' availability has. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for the agenda on the 1st? Um, let's move on to um, a I have a motion to enter executive session. I yeah. got it. Oh. Go, go. You got it. It's uh, this is a, the 
contract or the other one? It is contracts. Okay. Hang on. Oh boy, there's two. It is pending or probable civil litigation. Oh it is attorney client privilege and it is real estate. Okay. You know what you're I'm, now I need to find it. <coughs> you have to do the, that one first. Motion of. Oh, okay. okay. I move. I should just print this out. Yeah, we really should. I should this this was a process thing. I totally yeah. missed it. <laughs> when we did process, we should have. Yeah. So, so how would I start the motion? You would have to move that specific. You would have to move that premature, premature general. Premature. Okay. Premature jump down to the And then, I, then you, I have to hit all of and these? And then there would be, so that motion would have to go and be seconded. And there'd be a motion to go into executive session for those reasons. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a bit clunky, to say the least. Uh, so I move that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial, substantial disadvantage. And that's it. And that's okay. <laughs> second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next. And then you'd make a motion to go to executive session. I, I move to enter executive session for contracts, contracts pending, probable, pending probable or pending civil litigation. Probable or pending civil litigation. Attorney client attorney, 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 attorney attorney client privilege and real estate. Real estate. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, we'll not be here for an hour. What was the last one? Real estate. Real estate. Real estate. And if the planning commission is done, we can head that way. I'm yeah, they sure. did. I saw them leave. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you all for.